Kevin, wow. Uh, well, I'm officially back uh, from Perth, Western Australia. Uh, many of you would have been watching from around the world of Elimination Chamber, Perth, 2024 from Optus Stadium. Uh, that event took place now about a day and a half ago. Uh, it was Saturday night for me in Perth. For you guys, it was like for in, in the States, it was like very, very, very early Saturday morning. Very. Um, Kevin can explain his point of view running on about four coffees and like minimal sleep and alarms and all that. He can talk to you about that. But for me, let me talk to you. Um, I'm going to break down what it was like from Perth, uh, being there, my first experience at WWE Live. So much went into that um, from the, the trip over to the, the Perth airport. I have a story from there. Yes. Like the, the press conference or the press event. I have a number of stories when it was literally 100 degrees outside for you guys in the States. It was 35 degrees. I'm standing there for an hour and a half. I got like, a, I was like 10, 10 rows, not 10 rows, but I was like 15 meters away from the stage. So these wrestlers, like Paul Levesque was like right in front of me, pal, throwing his water bottle into the audience um, and so much more. The Elimination Chamber itself, there's so much to go into. Kevin, I guess I'll ask you just because it's our bit. How are you doing, pal? Uh, I'm great, pal. Hey, how are you? Let me ask you that. Um, well, I'll start. Paul Levesque and Nick Khan gave me laryngitis. Oh, Jesus. Um, my, like... It's like a base of my throat legitimately just it's not like a sore throat like up the top which is like a normal like oh I, i'm sick i have a cold or a flu sore throat it's like a voice box my voice is like tired hurts to swallow sore throat Ugh. so that's fun um shout out nick khan for that one yeah yeah anyway are, are, are you sure it was paul levesque and nick khan and it wasn't a roman reigns fan at the perth airport and when you arrived on what was it thursday when you arrived right yeah, Thursday. So I'll set the scene here. Um, I get up at like early hours of the morning, Thursday morning. Okay, I, I'm jetting off, pal. I'm leaving the Canberra airport to go. It's Canberra to Sydney, which took like 45 minutes. And then it was from there, Sydney straight to Perth. And um, the Sydney to Perth flight was like five hours. You usually travel from one side of Australia to the other. Most of Australia is just outback, barren land. It's pretty weird looking at. You just see just like dry, deserty, dirt land over most of Australia. So there you go, it's the Outback pal, Rhea Ripley. Um, so there was that. Uh, the cool thing about the flight though, I must say, I was sitting, so I'm in the window seat, next to me is this like super cool, awesome dad, um, African guy, I believe, uh, he's yeah, darker skin, his daughter, who must've been maybe five, it was like, you know, he's taking her along. This is like the one of the coolest dads in the world, by the way, like as soon as the flight starts, he pulls out his little thing from his bag. He's like, oh, he opened this to his daughter. She like opens it. It was like a WWE, like a SmackDown Women's Championship, like little pillow bag thing. Oh, that's it's cool. A bit hard to des- that's it's cool, a bit hard yeah. to describe, but she was so happy. She was, And then I was thinking to myself, this is what it's all about, right? Yes. You know, because obviously what we do, pal, we, we discuss the backstage politics. We're, we're, we're political doing- chess. Political chess, you make your videos about these scandals in wrestling, about, you know, Booker T having Triple H pin him after having a cup of coffee in the fifth row at WrestleMania 19. Like, we do all this sort of stuff. We discuss AW's politics, Chris Jericho, we all the all this stuff we do. And then I'm sitting there on this plane as this dad is giving his daughter this like women's championship belt. She's got like a Becky Lynch shirt on. I'm like, for her, this is like the biggest thing ever. This is the biggest thing in the world. This is all she'll talk about for probably years. Like this event, you know, getting this thing. Oh, I, I, I literally said to her, I was just like, you know, be very nice to your dad. Like he's he's a very good dad, I can tell. You know, so uh-huh. then I was having a chat to him. He, he's, he, he's in his mid-30s. He's been watching since the Attitude Era. So I was having a chat to him. And it was, it was just funny because like we, we agree on all these same things. I was like, Dolph Ziggler sucks. You know, like the, the product was so bad. This guy went to the show in Melbourne six years ago. So he was there at Super Showdown 2018. I was like, what was it like watching Kane at 55 and Shawn Michaels at 54 wrestling? What was that like? Did you enjoy that? It was like, yeah, the product was so bad. I can't believe I went. I paid like a thousand bucks to sit like 10 rows back and watch that rubbish. <laughs> I was like, oh, anyway. So there was, there was that pass. That was the flight over. So I get to Perth. It was blistering. So that was a, a good flight. I chatted him about basketball as well. I was going off about how Jokic doesn't deserve MVP, all this sort of stuff. Oh I was having a chit chat, yada yada. Okay, wait, wait, can, can, you, can I sidetrack you just for a moment on this Jokic yeah. thing? Uh, uh, mm-hmm. If Jokic is not MVP this year, who is it? 
Luca's Luca's averaging 35, 8, and 9 and carrying a team of bums. How is he not MVP? They're, they're gonna just... finish. They're gonna finish with like the ninth seed and barely make a playing spot. Like Yogi's I, I, I know they're like Yogi's six to Yogi's fifth right the now. Sixth seed a year and a half ago. Like, what? Yeah, as a ninth seed though, you can't win as a ninth seed. He's, like won seven straight games and he's like the five seed. Come on, let's be yeah, fair. for now, let's for now, fair. for now, until the rest of the West picks up. All right, I, I digress. We can talk about that later. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. you know you're wrong. Anyway, whatever. So we move on. I'm at the Perth airport. It's like midday Thursday. All right, it, Perth is hot. That's the sort of thing with Perth. Perth. It's Western Australia. It's February, so it's still summer over here in Western Australia and just Australia generally. It's like 34 degrees or like 95, 100 degrees for you in Fahrenheit. It's hot, all right? So I get there. I'm outside. It's like midday. I'm waiting for like a, a cab, or like a taxi, shuttle bus, whatever. I'm sitting there with my bag, okay? I'm chilling. I'm outside. It's JTE pal, Jimmy the Elitist. I'm sitting there. This random man, all right, this guy must have been maybe 55, 60. He stunk of alcohol. He was wearing this like wife beater singlet, Ugh. really out of shape. He comes over just like with his like, like his bag and like he had a couple of um, little carry bags. He had wheeled them over and like sat next to me. I was thinking to myself, oh God. What's going to happen here? Like, this this is really sketchy. Like, this guy stinks of alcohol. I couldn't really understand what he was saying. I'm just sort of like, yeah, yeah, I'm like going along with whatever he's saying. I'm like, just, you know, trying to be safe here. So I was like, this could be the end of a late hate right here. Like, I'm sitting there. I don't know who this man is. He's just talking to me. I'm like, okay, yep. And then, like, it, it was a bit of a creep. So there was this, it must have been a flight attendant or something that was getting picked up after a shift or whatever. He's making weird, creepy comments. I'm just like, I've been in Perth 20 minutes and I've got this drunk guy who literally, he was like pulling out whiskey and alcohol from his thingo and just like drinking. And I'm like, it's literally midday on a Thursday. What are you doing? Like, what is going on? Eventually after like five, 10 minutes. Is that, wait, I'm it, sorry. Is that illegal in Australia? Like you could just pull out like liquor and just drink it in public like that? I mean, this guy was doing it. I, I don't know what the Western Australian rules are, but I was like, okay. Is that illegal like where you are? Can you do that? Can you just walk around the streets with like a bottle of whiskey and just like... Well, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be thrown in jail or anything. It was, it, it's a bit like, how you going? It's a bit how you doing, you know? So I don't know the, the, the policies on that, but yeah, so I'm that, sitting that, there. That's literally illegal here in the States. Like, you literally cannot yeah. walk around the streets with, with uh, visible alcohol. Like, you yeah. want, I mean, you want, I mean, you probably, yeah, you could get arrested. You'd probably be put in jail for, like, a weekend, like, if, if you know, or if it's, like, your fifth or sixth offense, you'll give you, like, a month in jail, but yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, that, that was that. So, yeah, I'm literally at the airport. I'm sitting outside like the arrivals and departures area waiting to be picked up. And I've got some creepy drunk guy in his like mid fifties, some like Bogan talking all weird, being a creepy perv, making comments about this flight attendant. I'm like, I've been in Perth 10 minutes. What is going on? Anyway, Love it. so that was that. So, so JTE survived that pal. I march on with the rest of the Thursday, get to the accommodation, you know, settle in, yada, yada, buy some groceries, all that sort of stuff comes to the trip. Not too relevant. Well, I will take you to, pal. I'm going to, as Michael Cole would say, shift gears now to talk about the press event, pal. So I go to the press event yes. on Friday. Um, firstly, pal, do you have any questions before I just go on and go on a tangent? Uh, I'm just going to say, now walk me through your experience at the press event. I, I did not see anything mm. from the press event. Yep. I saw like Triple H like doing the orchestra of a Cody chant. Mm -hmm. Like That's pretty much all I saw. So, right. so walk me, walk me through, walk us through the elite heat listeners, walk mm. us through your experience at the press conference, pal. Cool. Gotcha. So I went, I went running on, you know, Friday morning. Most of you know, I'm quite into fitness. I'm like, I'm going to explore Perth, did a big run, you know, explored the area. It was quite nice. So that was like really early um, Friday morning because Perth gets really hot really quickly. It was already hot by like 7am by the time I finished the run. Anyway. Sounds like so Florida. I'm sitting, around, I'm sitting around the accommodation. It's like 10.05 a.m. Keep in mind, Perth time, press conference, press event starts at uh, midday, 12 o'clock. Uh, so that was when it officially got underway, pal. That's when WWE officially went live on Facebook, pal, for the press event. Um, so at 12 o'clock, I decided to, I'm, I said to myself, look, I'm in Perth. There's not really anything else to do right now at 10 a.m. I've already been running. Let me just get to the press event. Let me just get off the stadium. So I get my Uber. This cool African guy, I think he's from Cameroon or Senegal. I forget which one. He, he picks me up in the Uber, pal. He drives me like 4Ks up the road to 
where my accommodation is. I tip the Uber driver, pal. You make sure you got to tip those Uber drivers, pal, if they're nice. I had a couple of really snarky Uber drivers on this trip where I, I didn't tip them. I was just like, I'm not giving you extra money. Do you give me attitude for the pickup? Anyway, whatever. Different side tangent. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you, Akshat, on Saturday. I, I'm not giving you extra money. This Indian Uber driver I had gave me attitude. I was like, I'm not copping that. I'm not copping that act shot anyway whatever so there was that i get there kevin it's like maybe it's 10 20 10 25 i'm there nice and early okay i thought okay there's like a couple of different merch stand like pop-up stores open uh there's one right next to where the press event stage was so you got this big press event stage anyone who watched the press event knows what the stage looks like basically just general sort of press conference stage nothing too crazy you've got this like merch area WWE merch stand and you have all the pictures of the wrestlers whatever i line up line takes about 15 minutes i'm thinking okay i'm gonna get you know la like, like first thing i'm gonna ask for is an la night shirt that's the main thing i want an la night shirt i wanted a cody shirt and then if not i was trying to get my mate a like a judgment day r oh, truth shirt because he requested that like a month ago for when i go so i tried that if not i have like a whole list kevin i have like six or seven things i'm like any of these i'm gonna buy Okay, any of them. So I get to the front of the line. This French woman is like, is serving me, I, I guess. I, I, I'm like going over one by one. Do you have this in this size, this size, anything? No, 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 we, we don't have that. Okay, how about this? Do we have Cody Rhodes shirt, any Cody shirt? Like there's one up there. Do you have that in either this size? No, 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 we don't. Okay, how about... CM Punk, do you have the CM Punk Hell Froze Over shirt in this size? This like no, no, no. So I was standing there for like three minutes. They had like nothing. Like nothing I wanted was there. I'm like, this is unbelievable. This is insane. It's only Friday morning and they're already out. Like this can't be, like, what's going on? So the merch stand on Friday next to the press event was a complete failure. Got literally nothing. So I was like, okay, fair. This French woman was a pain in the ass. She was, she just gave me attitude as well. I'm like, I'm trying to, trying to pay money here and give you merchandise or like buy merchandise i'm getting attitude here what's going on wait, I wait, can i, can I ask a question so yeah. are people generally in australia like nice people like when you interact with with people is it a general like generally yeah it does depend though but yeah okay yeah because it sounds yeah. like you're expecting a level of service uh, that uh that doesn't exist with like within like american companies like, true you know you that's, go that's like probably, yeah yeah but like at the same time i'll get to it my, my experience on board all this gear was yeah. much better so it was okay clearly maybe it was a bad apple at the merch stand maybe now. i don't know but I don't nonetheless know. that happens it's like 10 40 i wander over okay like while i'm just getting myself positioned because like, i was still like an hour and a bit early so i was getting a pretty good position for this press event pal paul triple h levesque walks out this is like what they showed on oh, like the God. like the like the feed he got there like an hour 20 before people people were already chanting like an hour 20 before we're doing like we're throwing up like we the ones we're chanting like you know we want cody even though he wasn't there we were just chanting we want cody we're doing all these chants paul triple h levesque walks out there this is like saying like a this is a celebrity pal yes. this is the effing game you know, and seeing him in person for the first time, like, oh my God, like, this is Paul Levesque. I'm like 20 feet from Paul Levesque here. Like, this is insane, you know? So he comes out, he, he's like, he's, he's like, he's like really rolling up the crowd. We're all going nuts. We're acting as though we've never seen Triple H ever. We're, we're like, it's just the biggest thing. Oh my God, we're going like nuts. They did the video for the like Facebook and Triple H's social medias. That was all good, okay? So there's that pal. Right. All good. So then I'm sa we're saying I'm waiting for like an hour. People are starting chants. You know, like every single chant you can think of, there was a chant for. It's funny because someone tried to start a feed me more chant and everyone just booed him. And then one guy's like, Ryback sucks. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> That's so random. Why, why would anybody I, want to do a feed me more chant? People were trying to chant anything. And like half the time they were getting booed down. One person started to try, like, started to, try to start a Logan Paul chant. And within, he was like, Logan, Paul, I was like, boo, he sucks. Like, it was just. That's interesting. Okay. So people are chanting fun. Logan so Paul, they're chanting Ryback. I love that. 
chanting, chanting, whatever. It's like 15 minutes before the start. How we've been standing out in the baking sun. Okay, mind, it's 35 degrees Australian. So i.e. it's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're standing out in the baking sun, pal. There's literally loud, thunderous, we want sunscreen chants. Okay, we're chanting, <laughs> we want sunscreen. Paul Levesque walks out again. <laughs> this is like this is like 15 minutes before we're supposed to start. Like we're chanting, we want sunscreen. And, and Paul Levesque's like, well, I'm giving you my water bottle. <laughs> so he like, he throws his water bottle into the audience and we're all cheering. Like it's just, it's this sort of stuff, which when you're there, this is the funnest thing. Like this is, you know, you're standing there, you're 15 feet away from Paul Levesque, who's coming out for no reason, just because we're chanting, we want sunscreen. He's throwing a water bottle at some of us, like loud Australian fans. Right. Like it's, it's just, this is the experience of the APAL. Yes. This is what it's all about. So they do the press conference, yep. the press event. I'm not going to do a full big review of that. It was like, by the time this is like four days ago, most people have seen it. It was like a hype up event. The things I did notice, Logan Paul, everyone hates him. Like, yep. you know, everyone just hates that guy. Nia Jax, everyone hates her. Yep. Yep. You know, pretty straightforward. Grayson Waller, amazing reaction, as you'd expect. Uh, he, you know, everyone loved him. Uh, the, the whole thing he was doing where he was like, eight months ago, I was in the O2 arena in London. Boo! Like, we're all loudly booing. He's like, it was disgusting, lad. It was gross. And, you know, John Cena had the balls to tell me that he wants WrestleMania in London. Boo! Loud Cena sucks chance. Wow. I started the Cena. I started the Cena sucks chant. That was me, by nice, the way. Nice, nice. That was fun. You know, so we're all chanting, Cena sucks, Cena sucks. Grayson Waller was like vibing around. He's like, oh my God, we've Cena sucks chant going. How good is this? <laughs> anyway, so they do that. Michael Cole came out. Everyone's cheering him. Everyone loves Michael Cole. Corey Graves comes out, loud boos. Everyone hates Corey good. Graves. No one likes him. Good. You know? Yes, he's terrible. <laughs> he's, t bro. Bro, I, had a, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and the first thing I hear is Corey Graves' voice. Ugh. That's brutal. That's, that yeah, is, that, that's an egregious sight. That's awful. You know, Waller was great. Um, Triple H came out. Uh, the one note I do have, like, this is one of the main things I want to stress. Triple H is a legitimate rock star. Like, when he, especially at the press conference, when he's coming out with those sunglasses on to Motorhead, like, being there live, hearing, like, the Motorhead entrance, I wish now... I was at like WrestleMania 28, seeing him versus The Undertaker, those entrances alone with Motorhead Prime Triple H and like Streak Undertaker with his WrestleMania entrance, that is like peak wrestling right there. And the match was excellent at 28, for instance. But like Triple H coming, even to this press event where obviously he's not wrestling, he's not doing anything. He's just talking to the crowd for like a minute or two and saying, oh, let's get to business. This match is happening tomorrow night. Like even him just doing that was awesome. You know, he's coming out to Motorhead. We're all singing. We're singing along the Motorhead, pal. It was fantastic. So, yeah, Triple H was a big star on the like the whole thing. He's just such a cool guy. He's oh, an yeah. awesome leader for the company. He's such a great like representative. Like, you see Triple H. He's like, that's a legit top 10 all-time wrestler. There's no real allegations as of this stage with Triple H. So, we're going <clears> to <throat> view him in high regard. Uh, hopefully, after WrestleMania, nothing comes out. We'll see. But anyway, so there was that. Seth Rollins. Going into this whole weekend, I wasn't really like into Rollins that much. Like when Rollins is ever singing his song, I'm like, eh, I'm not, I, I don't really want to just sing Whoa! and just be singing and singing. He got me on board. Like being there live, everyone just sings his song and it's like, it's fun. It's contagious. Yeah. It's like an orchestra. It you is. Know? Like it I, is. Was just, I was saying there, like, oh, too cool for school. I'm, I'm not going to really join. I'm not really a Rollins guy. It's a bit sort of nerdy, bit marky singing his song or whatever. It's like everyone sings it and it's it's so over and his entrance is so like captivating. So yes. yeah, Rollins, he did a really good job. He's really good at engaging the crowd. He was one of the better ones, at, especially the press event with working with the audience. And that's one thing you find with when you're actually at these shows, what we do and what we watch, it really is, it's Cirque du Soleil. It, it's circus. It's like, like it's a performance for a crowd, which is what wrestling always was 110 years ago right. when George Hackenschmidt was bear hugging people for the world heavyweight championship oh that's what wrestling God. always was oh like it's you know it's, it's a circus act to engage the crowd and that these are these are very good performers they're very good at engaging the crowd they get timing really well they get work in the audience this is what they're paid hundreds of thousands millions to do especially for the ones we saw at the press event these are the big stars so right. yeah just that was one of my main takeaways from watching it i thought most guys most wrestlers most acts were very good 
very good at what they did. Randy Orton was great. He's coming out there. He's like, I flew 30 hours and there's nowhere I'd rather be. I, I'm not one of these guys who can sit on the movie set for 12 hours a day, six days a week. That's not my life. You guys appreciate me. I got a rod in my back. You know, I've got a, had a very successful back surgery. I'm Randy Orton, yada, yada. Like, Orton was great. Kevin Owens was funny. Seeing him live, it's, it's, it, we've discussed this for years. Everyone says the same thing about Kevin Owens. Oh, he looks like your next door neighbor, whatever. He does. He doesn't have the same, like, aura of, like, the wrestlers. Like, when Logan Paul, Randy Orton, even, like, Seth Rollins or, you know, Triple H, like, when they come out, you think, oh, that's, like, a, a real, you know, sort of superstar, tough-looking wrestler generally. Like, when they come out, they have more of a wrestler's look. Owens looks more like, yeah, your everyday guy, but he's very entertaining. He's very good at working with the audience, which is really all you need in that regard. Like, when I was there, I wasn't like, oh, Owens looks like my next door neighbor. He sucks, boo. Because he was engaging with the audience. He was working with the crowd really well. His comedic timing's really good. So, yeah, it's just stuff like that. So these are the things I found and really noticed like when I was there um, as well, Kevin. Tiffany Stratton. Um, we'll get to the chamber in a moment. Very over. Uh, I don't know how that's going to translate to the American audience, the Australian audience at the press event and at the elimination chamber. Loved her. Loud Tiffy time chants constantly. Lots of cheers for Tiffany Stratton. She's supposed to be a heel, but everyone was cheering for her. Uh, during the chamber, I started multiple Tiffy time chants. That was me starting them. Uh, so nice. shout out me. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll discuss that shortly. But yeah, that was the press event, pal. Rhea Ripley slaps or knocks or throws Prime onto Nia Jax. Nia Jax storms off angry. That was the press event. Grayson Waller and Rhea do a shooey. Everyone's cheering. All good. Anything else on the press event you want to know, pal? I think we can move on. Uh, yeah, I want. I just want to talk about Triple H's entrance for a moment. Yep. I, I, I've been uh, fortunate enough to see some incredible Triple H entrances. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania 24, Royal Rumble 06. They were kind of basic entrances. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he had, if I remember correctly, I don't think he had anything spectacular at 24. But at 33, he had the spectacular entrance. With the the biker the biker gang the motorcycle like that was just I mean a spectacle bro, yeah. and, and even just like seeing his entrance in his prime like it like at WrestleMania twenty four it's a simple entrance you know it's not much to it but it's the music and like you said the aura and it, that's like I want to say I don't know I don't know how I don't think it's like something you could teach but that mm. Triple H aura it's just not something that's present in today's wrestlers <clears throat> Roman Reigns has it and Cody has it. Mm. And that's about it. Yeah, I would say from the from the current mm. uh, roster, Rollins has like to a degree. You know, Rollins has it to mm. a degree, but Rollins doesn't have it at that level of like a Triple yeah. H. And when yeah. you think like, for example, two thousand eight, right? You've got like seven or eight wrestlers that have that aura: Batista, Triple H, you yeah. know, Taker, Edge, all these guys. And it and it kind of like it's um I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but the, the today's crop of talent, they just don't they just can't get to that level. I don't know if it's the booking or if it's the, the way the content's <laughs> consumed. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And we'll we'll get to more on that, but yeah, you you're dead on. Um and that was very noticeable during the chamber show itself. Like, you know, wrestlers, depending on how over they are, every wrestler needs a bit. Like, and this is what I found on the whole show, the main wrestlers who not got no reaction, but weren't nearly as over. The audience weren't nearly as into. The main ones, I'll tell you, Raquel Gonzalez, Bobby Lashley. These are wrestlers who don't really have, they don't have a chant. They don't really have a catchphrase. They don't have something you can really, you know, cheer or like or say. Like, for instance, obviously LA Knight's so over. He's a great example. With him, it's, yeah. And like the LA Knight, yeah. And like, let me talk to you. And like there's stuff you can say as an audience. To really, you know, like when they come out, really cheer, like, you know, usually good entrances. Um, for instance, you know, obviously Randy Orton's Randy Orton. So he's a bit of a different example. But, you know, wrestlers need things. Tiffany Stratton, it's Tiffy time, pal. Like all these other things. Bel Air has the AST thing. Like wrestlers, you need a thing. You need something for the audience to really connect to. So that when you get to a dull spot in a match where both wrestlers have done a spot, everyone's saying the clap, and then they can start a chant. You need a chant to start. You know, like Lashley didn't really have that. So all Lashley had during the chamber was when he speared Logan Paul through the pod, which got like the holy, you know, what chance. And that got like a great reaction. But when Lashley had his few minutes of just dominating the chamber match, the crowd was dead. That was the deadest the crowd was all night when Lashley was just punching Drew McIntyre. No one cared because there isn't really, there's not really a chant for Lashley. You know, there's not really like, there's nothing for him. Whereas when other wrestlers are dominating matches, 
you know, when the LA Knight was controlling the match, everyone's just yelling randomly in their bays, yeah, yeah, we're doing like a year off in our bays. And it was just, it was fun. So there's that, pal. Um, that being said, I think we're ready to move into the chamber, pal. Yeah, I mean, is, is there anything that you want to, you want to walk us through that happened after the press conference leading up to, um, to like the, the elimination chamber? Anything from that time, from when you left the press conference till you yep. arrived at the show? Yes, so there's a couple of things. Um, so yeah, the rest of Friday, pretty straightforward, pretty low key. Um, went home, it was just so hot. I mean, there wasn't really much you could do when it was like 100 degrees. You know, I, I was just getting ready for the next day. Uh, I did a, a park run on Saturday morning. Uh, there's a heap of them. Uh, it's a 5K run or a 3.11 mile run, pal, every Saturday morning. There's a heap of different, like, so I did one just outside Optus Stadium, which is pretty cool. Um, there was a guy there. I, I sent you the picture on Instagram. I might put this on um on my socials, but it was basically like it was a Hulk Hogan, legitimate Hulk Hogan cosplay. The dude was about he was like a big he was a jack guy. He was a big man, must have been early 40s, great sense of humor, fully dressed, decked out as Hulk Hogan. So cool. Like I got a picture with him. That That's was hilarious. awesome. So this guy's at a run, it's 8 a.m. in the morning on Saturday morning, it's like raining. Yeah, it was like it was like wet in the morning. It was raining. He's fully dressed up as Terry Belaya, the the infamous Hulk Hogan. He's doing oh. this run, pal. Uh, it was just like like this is the stuff. <laughs> it's just fun. Like you know, it's so ridiculous. I got a picture with him after, and like on the course, I'm running around. I was like yelling out, "Let me tell you something, brother!" Like I, I was joining him with the Hogan bit because it was fun. So that's there was that in the morning. Um, speaking of Hogan, so I get home. I get myself all ready. I lounge around for a bit. I watch a bit of SmackDown. I call Brian, pal. He's just like, you know, going, he's like, oh, I'm staying up all night, pal. I'm going to watch the show. Oh, my God. So, this is, so this is like, for me, like, what, Friday afternoon? Like, oh, this is, yeah, like Friday afternoon. Then, like, Friday night, there's SmackDown. Right. You know, like, meanwhile, for me, it's like morning, early, middle of the day um, on Saturday in Perth. Okay. Then it gets the afternoon. So for you guys, it's like the middle of the night. This is like early, yep. early hours of the morning. Yep. I'm getting ready, pal. Okay. I head off. Okay. What what time? What driver. time? What uh? What local time did the show start for you? Show started. Main show started at six p.m. Okay. The main show started um, at six p.m. Okay. Yeah. Kickoff match started at five thirty. People were filing in. Gates opened at like three thirty. People were filing in. So I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna leave at about. So I left. About, I left my place about three thirty p.m. Uh, I want to get there really early because I mean I'm paying like a couple hundred for a ticket here. I might as well get there as early as I can as much value out of as I can, pal. So I get there, Uber driver drops me off. It, it's like a, a K and a half walk, like a K walk to the stadium. So obviously with these events, pal, you know this very well. Everything gets closed off in the immediate area because there's obviously all the trucks, events, you know, it, it it's closed off around. So you have to walk uh, a mile. It, this reminds me, I don't want to cut you off, but did I, did I tell you from when I went to St. Petersburg, did I tell you the, the parking situation? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll say that. I'll go after because I, I like as you're telling all this, I realize that there's so much, so many things that I didn't tell from mm. my trip to the Royal Rumble that I got to tell later on. So you, yeah. you finish first. Yeah, yeah. So I get dropped off, right? And this was one of the highlights. Okay, so I'm walking. There's like you know, really long, pretty straight path. You can see Optus Stadium in the distance. Beautiful stadium, might I say. Like they showed great shots of it during the um during the coverage. They kept showing Optus Stadium. The whole thing was the WA Perth government trying to get more tourism to Perth because during COVID they shut the whole state down for three years and their economy went like bad. That's basically the, that's the behind the scenes, you know, reasoning behind why they're trying to push the elimination chamber and push Perth during this whole event. Anyway, whatever. So I'm walking the elimination chamber, pal. It's like a mile away. There's a bunch of like hotels along the side, pal. On like the fourth floor of a hotel, there's a, another, a different guy fully decked up as Hulk Hogan, pal. And he's on the balcony I don't know if he was drunk or not. He had like a few of his friends there who also wearing wrestling shirts. Yes. He's like calling out from the balcony, let me tell you something, brother. But he's like a full Hulk Hogan yelling out at people from like across the, because there was like a little pond. So there's like the hotel or pond and like the path we're all walking across. He must have been doing this for maybe like half an hour. I don't know. He's just yelling out, like doing Hogan impressions of people. You. Yeah. Like it was the funniest thing. I got a, I got a video of it. Everyone's like laughing. Like this is just like it's the most wrestling thing ever. Some yes. grown man who probably was drunk, dressed fully up as Terry Hulk Hogan Belaya pal, impersonating oh, him. Yeah. You and like you know he had he had real American blasting. 
He's like, oh, 24 inch pythons. He's, he's doing the whole Hogan impression. I'm just like, this is amazing. So we, I wander up there. I get it's like 4 p.m. So about two hours of show time. I'm lining up. There's a different merch stand. This time, I actually got stuff. So we got the CM Punk hat. Uh, you can see this on the uh, on the video. Uh, this was love uh, that. I think this was thirty dollars or something. Which Amer- American was, or for you? Uh, Australian. Okay. So like fifty five bucks for me or something. Sort of reasonable. Like I looked at that price and was like, of all the merchandise prices, that's okay. I'm not offended by that. Uh, shirts were sixty five dollars a pop. I'm gonna, which I'm is gonna a bit see how you done. How this translates? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's a bit how you're going. Um, that's yeah, it's a bit questionable. But right, I mean, so that's there... twenty dollars American for the hat. Yeah, and then sixty you said for the sixty five. Sixty five for the forty. Show. I think it's that's, that's forty two. You had. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's what I paid forty. I paid forty five for a shirt, and I paid the hat was like thirty. That hat was like thirty five in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so I mean, so that was that. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I bought a you know, let me talk to you Perth shirt because I want to. I want an LA night shirt, and I want like a Perth shirt. Uh, I wasn't gonna buy the, like the Elimination Chamber. I was there shirt because I'm like I'm never gonna wear that. You know, I'm not just gonna walk around like the local mall pal on a Sunday morning rocking a. Perth Elimination Chamber, I was there, big WWE logo. I'm not going to wear that. So I'm not going to pay 65 Australian dollars to Nick Khan for that shirt. I'm not buying it, Nick Khan. Okay, oh so there was that. God. And I bought the program, pal. Uh, love it. So here's the Elimination Chamber official program. I love that. Uh, you got Rhea on the front, big WWE logo on the back. Uh, my thinking for these now, for some of you, you, you might own like 50 of these. Some of you might have one of them. I thought... Okay, it's an official program. It's gonna have like some things about storylines, some things about recent pay per views, nope. like as if it's like you know, like a regular like a, yeah. a sports magazine. I usually like you know what a program yeah. is. Like if there's an NFL one, yeah. like a Super Bowl one will have the games from the past season, you know, records, all this sort of thing. I'm like, okay, cool. So I open up the program. Okay, first page. Once again, big picture of the Perth tourism minister talking about how great Perth is. Okay, great. Uh, you got WrestleMania 40, pal, where The Rock played political chess and inserted himself in the main event only for his daughter to get death threats and then him get taken out. So there was that. And then the next page, okay, I'm thinking, all right, this is going to be, there's going to be a whole segment on the storylines. There's going to be a Royal Rumble section. There's going to be a section about CM Punk's return at Survivor Series, NXT. They're going to get a section. All we get on this whole effing program is Joseph Anna Y, the babysitter, naked in like the second page of the program? Okay, so we've got Joseph Anna Y punching Kevin Owens, Paul Heyman, the guy who nearly caused the WrestleMania 17 Tommy Dreamer debacle. There's that. Anyway, oh then, then we get to page four, <laughs> oh and this God. is actually the, the good part, pal. Jesus this is Christ, someone who oh is a mainstream star, got a big entrance, Cody. Is Cody Pal the American Nightmare Pal? So you got so essentially what you got is like a like a yearbook. <laughs> this is a bunch of pictures. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of very high definition, very good resolution pictures of wrestlers half naked doing moves. That's what that's what I got. I expected like a, a yearbook thing, a chronicle of recent events, storylines. I expected a segment, you know, elimination chamber, like what the card is, like you know, previews of matches. I, I thought. There'd be a whole thing about Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax, like three pages about Rhea Ripley and her history and all that. Instead, all we get is a picture of Rhea Ripley with, like here, with Dom Mysterio in like the, like the Rhea Ripley page. I'm like, this is the this is her event. Like Rhea Ripley's the face of this event. She's the biggest Australian star ever. The only other Australian star who people even know was like Nathan Jones 20 years ago, who got attacked in the bathroom at WrestleMania 19 and had to you know it's a joke like like that guy kevin was a wanted australian criminal 30 years ago for armed robberies in bugger road queensland he didn't listen to mark calloway or the big show paul white's advice in the lead up to wrestlemania 19 you covered this in your video and so i'm sitting here reading this program the picture of rhea ripley on like the 20th page where's the write-up for her match she may have entered this event anyway so there's this whole program Interestingly, pal, like I know the political chest in this whole thing. 
I'm looking here. I'm like, Political where's Drew McIntyre? Chess. Oh no! Like, where's Drew McIntyre in this program? You got Piper Niven and Chelsea Green, raw enhancement talents who get ten minutes in the second hour every second week. I'm like, where the f is Drew McIntyre? Drew McIntyre is behind Mark and Joe Coffey in like the middle of the program. I'm like, this guy's facing Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. I figured you'd have. Like, this is an order of style power, right? Gianna Y is the top one, I guess, because he just is the top star, I guess. I don't know. Cody, and then you got the next page is Becky and Belair and so on and so forth. I thought it was an order of star power. Drew McIntyre is in, like, the middle of the book. He's behind Mark Coffey. Who? I don't know. So, anyway, and then the back page of the whole thing, pal, like, the last page of this program, if I can actually open it. Also, why does Matt Camp get a picture in the program? Who is this guy? He's the guy from the bump. Why does he get a feature in the program? What? Anyway, Philip Jack Brooks gets a say. Oh, it's Titus O'Neil, pal. It's Titus O'Neil. Anyway, Philip Jack Brooks, Pepsi Phil gets a double page in the back. He's like the very back of the program, pal. Yes. Anyway, well, you know they gotta keep uh, they gotta keep you invested to read throughout the whole program. So you got McIntyre in the middle. You know, you got Punk at the end, so that way you get through the whole thing, bro. If you just get Roman, Cody, Punk, and McIntyre the first four pages, you'd be like, what Kevin, are you going to read you this got for? You got Adam Share. It's the body lifter, pal, and Jinder Mahal. And from the Ganges, I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> that, that, that was an unnecessary rant. I just found it weird. I'm like, where's Drew McIntyre? Why is he in the middle of this program behind Mark Coffey? What are they doing? W where are the write-ups for the matches? Ray Ripley's main eventing, and the best she gets is like three pictures on the 15th page next to Don Mysterio. Oh, my God. Who, I don't know. Hey, so I paid like $20 of my money for that. That's like that's like around an hour's work after taxes and everything is taken away. That's like an hour's work for that program. And CM Punk's on the back page. Anyway. All right, let, let's reel this in for a moment, pal. We're 40 minutes in at this point. Okay. All right, fair. So, anyway. All right, hold on. Let, 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 me, uh, let, let, me, let me set the table here, pal, for you. Yeah. All right. So... I'm just going to give my, my perspective on this whole event, and then I'll let you go yeah, for a moment. Thanks, All right, so my alarm rings at 4 a.m. on a Saturday. Now, I wake up at 5 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday, so it's not a big deal waking up early. But I'm just like, man, I want to enjoy my weekend, bro. Like, I want to enjoy my Saturday. You know, I want to sleep till like 7.30, 8 o'clock if I'm lucky, pal. Um, You know, I get to bed at like 11.30, because I'm just like, work. I'm up late working on this WrestleMania 19 video. Uh, I'm doing all the research. I'm looking up like Jay Z and Fabulous being too scared to to battle John Cena. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Go to bed. I wake up and I'm like, bro. Literally, I turn on the TV. I hear Corey Graves. Literally, I turn on Peacock. I hear Corey Graves and and then they cut to Peter Rosenberg and Rosenberg is Sam Roberts are breaking down whatever match they're, yeah. they're talking about. Dwayne uh -huh. Johnson. The uh -huh. the pre show is egregious, bro. Yeah. Um, but I have to say this. I have a newfound respect. For all the inter for all of you international fans that wake up like in the UK, like that are up at one AM for Monday Night Raw or for whatever for whatever show yeah. it is. You're just up at one AM watching Backlash twenty nineteen. You're watching Backlash twenty sixteen with, with AJ Styles and Sheamus and Shane McMahon. Mm. Yeah. Like that's incredible. Like I just I don't know. I'm just used yeah. to I'm used to like pay per views for me are at eight o'clock at night. Like a standard time, seven, eight o'clock. I'm yeah. up at four thirty, bro, and I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. Yeah. So now, with all that being yeah. said, um, how was it like? How, how what was it like? Just in general, like, what was your your feeling going into the show, and like as it was starting, and you know, Triple H probably did a hype promo and all that stuff. Like, how was that? Yeah. So entering the arena, uh, it's like the first time you go in and you see like the set. You see the big, obviously the WWE stage, the whole production. You're just like, oh my god! Like it was like, wow! Like right away, because you know Kevin Owens mentioned in the press event. Like there's there's whole teams, dozens and dozens of people work tireless hours right. putting these things together, setting everything up. Right. It looked incredible. So I was very impressed. I found my seat. Um, <clears throat> you, you bang on about the kickoff. The kickoff needs to change somehow. It's just not good, you know and especially with this, they, they didn't have any kickoff panel like in Perth. They kept them in the United States in like some WWE headquarters studio. So we're, we're sitting there all having to look at the stupid big screen, listening to Peter Rosenberg 
be like, well, no, I, I think Drew McIntyre has to win the Chamber. Well, actually, I think LA Knight needs to win. I'm like, this is crap. This needs to change. They need to do something about it. Like for you, as you said, you're waking up at 4.30 a.m. listening to Sam Roberts and Peter Rosenberg bicker about why Drew McIntyre should or shouldn't win. And I'm sat there in my bay watching it on a screen. Like it, that, that was questionable. Uh, the, the kickoff match, like Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus the Kabuki Warriors, Indy got an amazing reaction. You can tell she was like really emotional during it. It was really good. Um, obviously, filler throwaway match in, in the sense of obviously Indy Hartwell is not going to win the tag titles. We know that. But it was about the live crowd. It was about the reaction. It was probably the best Kabuki Warriors match you could probably do by far. Crowd was really into it. Kabuki Warriors retained whatever. I'm not going to harp on that, but it was really fun. Just, you know, during the match, booing Kyrie Sane, booing Oscar, cheering Indy. We want Indy chance. Loud, we want Indy chance. That was fine. So that was that. And then it was showtime, pal. Okay. Elimination Chamber 2024. Oh, it's actually, there was an LA Night interview on the kickoff. Apparently. I didn't see that, yeah. Well, we didn't. We didn't at the event. So I'm oh, sitting there. This is- yes, I remember you told me about this. Go ahead. So I'm sitting there, right? It's like five minutes till showtime. The buzz is really going. Like, everyone's like, oh my God. It felt like a pressure cooker in there. We were ready to just go off and just cheer and experience the show. It felt like the atmosphere was building up. We're just, all the big screens just say, have the Elimination Chamber logo. Nothing is happening. I'm like, well, you, you text me. There's an LA Night interview going on. I know that's what's happening, but we can't see it. And we're paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars to be at this show. And we can't even tell the LA Knights getting interviewed when like the main wrestlers we're trying to, we're here to see. We can't even see that. What what was going on? Yeah, I mean he he didn't really say a whole lot. He was just like, you know, I am here I'm here to beat five other men in the elimination chamber. Yeah. Like it wasn't really anything like to write home about. Uh but I did have to make this observation because you you were like, Oh, Kevin Dunn. It's been different since Kevin Dunn. And and it happened at the Royal Rumble too. And that was like right after Kevin Dunn got let go. At the Royal Rumble the women's match, they had they were having technical difficult during the women's match, they were having technical difficulties with the screen. Like mm-hmm. Naomi's entrance. I couldn't see Naomi's entrance. I was sitting by the side where they where the wrestlers come out from. So I couldn't see her entrance at all. They didn't have it on the screen. They didn't have like Asuka's entrance. Like I'm like, oh, I want to see all these cool entrances. Asuka with the mask. Nothing. It's just WWE Elimination Chamber or WWE Royal Rumble on a screen. Yeah. I'm like, what is the point of this, bro? Like, how do you have that difficulty? It only happened during that one match. But yeah, no, I I, yeah. I feel your pain. It was frustrating. Oh, no, I, I agree. And that's the thing I noticed with production. Like, I, I think <clears throat> from just my one experience, I'm going to make a broad sweeping statement, pal. Oh, Jesus. Since, since Kevin Dunn's gone, I think the TV, like what you see on television is like a bit better. Yes. With regards to, yeah, the presentation, like the, when they show the wrestlers coming in and all that sort of like, yeah, it makes it feel like it's legit sports. There are a number of glitches and like little things that happen during the show. Yes. Like during the men's chamber, for instance, the same thing happened that what you just mentioned. The screens, because where I was, there was a bit of a pillar in the way, so you couldn't fully get, you couldn't fully see the ring properly. The screens we were using, like above the ring to watch, the screens just like stopped working. And then like they they, they did like a, a countdown timer for like the the, the, the second entrant in the men's chamber, like a minute after the first entrant, and we're all like, what the hell? That the, the first time was just ten seconds ago. They're already doing another timer. The timer ran out, and then the screen went like elimination chamber. And we started to loud we can't see chant because we couldn't say anything. Love it. It was like it was weird. So like there's a bunch of like glitchy little things like during the show, little things like that. Not enough to ruin the show, but just like worth mentioning. So anyway, show starts, pal. Okay, women's chamber, phenomenal, live experience, really entertaining. Um, Becky Lynch is clearly the biggest star in that match. Uh, people who think Liv Morgan should have won that match, no, no. Like, Becky Lynch was clearly the biggest star in that match. Tiffany Stratton was, like, getting great reactions. Bianca Belair was a bigger star I want to well. touch on the Liv Morgan thing. Mm. Here's the thing about Liv Morgan. She's not good. Mm. Like, she's just yeah. not good. Yeah. Like, people like her because she's hot. Like, and she has an aura. And she looks like a star. Yes. That, like, that's Ultimate Warrior, bro. Mm. Ultimate Warrior was a good-looking guy. Had aura. Nice body, whatever. Like face paint mm. that's Liv morgan like she there's nothing else to her she can't wrestle she made like four botches in this match alone mm. she's not she's objectively not a good wrestler like i'm saying this is someone who's never been in the ring before i'm not mm. like she she busts her ass she tries really hard she just doesn't execute moves the same way that becky lynch naomi bianca yeah. belair 
Tiffany, even Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton was running circles around her. Mm. Like she's, with you take away her entrance and her looks and and the and the the aesthetic of her, she doesn't really have anything yeah. to give. Like she's not yeah. on the level of a Becky Lynch. She's not a main event player. You know, she's a good mid card act. Yeah. And that was that was really evident when you were there, and like like I, I take a lot from the crowd reactions, and like you, you can you can tell when each wrestler comes out, the level of interest, like it's very obvious. I mean, you were at the Royal Rumble, you you, you know very well. Entrance music hits. How does the, how does your bay react? Is it yeah, everyone jumps up, cheering, filming, recording, or is the people just like oh yeah, and then that's it? So when Liv, Liv Morgan reactions wise got the second worst reaction of anyone. Raquel Rodriguez got the worst reaction. No one cared. But really, outside of her, Becky got the best reaction. Tiffany got the second best reaction. Naomi got the third best reaction. Um, and Bianca? Uh, Bianca Belair got like the fourth. Her reaction wasn't that as good as I thought it would be, Bianca Belair. And then Liv Morgan. I guess there's an outcry on Twitter because I guess how she looks or something. And because people just love her. And I'm like, live, the crowd wasn't as into her at all. The crowd was booing. Uh, when she eliminated, you know, when she eliminated, I think Tiffany Stratton, I believe, and like all this sort of thing, the crowd wasn't into it. So I guess people I saw some bitching on social media like a day later, oh, Liv Morgan needs an opportunity, give it a uh, Liv Morgan. And I'm like, for what? Like I was there. The crowd isn't into her that, in like that. Just because you are, because you think she's hot, she's not She's not ready for that main event spot the same way any of the other women bar Raquel were. So that being said, Becky Lynch, big star, match, awesome. So much fun. Best women's chamber match ever, yes, I think. By I far like, and away. Yeah. And I'm noticing this with the women. This is becoming a repeat trend. All these big shows, they're doing these like gimmick matches better than the men. Royal Rumble. Women's Rumble was just objectively better. You know, you were there. You can speak to that better than I can. Yeah. Women's Rumble was just better than the men. War Games, Survivor Series. Women's War Games, objectively better than yeah. the men. It just was. It simply was. This elimination chamber, women's chamber, objectively better than the men's one. All right. The, the men's one, as we'll get to, there was like a five minute patch where nothing happened. It was Lashley's just punching people and the crowd was dead. You know, so this was like the women are doing a lot really well in this regard. And for the, like, there was a, you know, a dad next to me who had like a five year old daughter and like a nine year old daughter. This is like their first wrestling experience generally. It's, it's only downhill from here, guys. It's only downhill from here. Um, like, you know, the five-year-old daughter's there. And I, I was like, I was fine. This is like, like what I was doing. Like, I glance over. You could see, like, she was just in, in love with what she was watching. You know, she, she had, be you know, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, all these, like, big female stars that she can aspire to, Tiffany Stratton. Like, you could see, like, ro you could physically see it in someone who's, like, really, like, young. This young kid just like, oh, wow. Like, like these, like, superheroes, which is awesome for them. You know, because for me, and I mean, you can test this more than me, but when I was growing up, it was Layla versus Beth Phoenix and Eve Torres, and no one cared. Yeah. It was Naomi and Cameron dancing with pom poms as the funked actors. That was my divas growing up. And, and when I was you growing know, up, it was Stacey, Ke um, not Stacey Keebler, it was um, <clears throat> Sable, Brock Lesnar's wife, Sable, and Tori Wilson, like dancing on each other, making out, which was like, which was fun, I guess. Like, to enjoy yeah. but like it's not, not the best representation you want to see of women on a on an entertainment show i know but like with this like you can say like you know becky lynch like all these like, like these are legitimate stars and role models now it's, it's pretty crazy yes. like it's pretty cool and once again the women trash on the men and this isn't even me like saying that from like oh oh well, women are better than men <laughs> no like literally they're just doing these matches better every time now it's, it's becoming a legitimate thing so there was that Great chain of match. I don't know if there's anything more you want to add on that. I thought the match was a heap of fun. It was great live. Yeah, yeah, the match was fun. Not really too much like that. I would that really jumps out now at this point. We're like mm -hmm. what a day and a half removed. Um, Tiffany Stratton was the clear star of the show. This was a star yeah. making yeah. perform or a star yeah. match of the a star of the match, not the star of the show. This was a, a star yeah. making match for her. Yeah. Is it going to be sustainable? We'll see. Um, I I think uh, I think she definitely put her best foot forward. <laughs> And yeah. she's, uh, yeah, her stock's at an all-time high right now. I don't see why she can't insert herself into the main event picture of the women's division. Yeah, um, also, you can, thank, you can thank me for about two or three of the uh, Tiffy Time chants. I started them. So, you know, I guess 
the, the vibe there, right? There were points in the match, you know, they'd be like, all the women are in there. Raquel's just hit a move or something. Everyone's like, oh, whatever. And then I'm like, I'm not letting this match get boring. I'm like, Tiffy time, Tiffy. And then all of a sudden, like the whole arena is chanting Tiffy time. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is fun. You know, yeah. um, and like let's go Becky chance for you know pretty loud as well. So yeah, um, Becky winning was the right decision. Becky versus Rhea, having been to this show, those are your two biggest women stars. Having them have a big match where Becky can like pass the torch officially to Rhea Ripley is like the, the this star of the women's generation for now. That's just that's your WrestleMania match. Yes, if you're whinging about that, saying it should be Liv Morgan, you you don't know what you're talking about. Objectively. You just, um, you're short-sighted because you get turned on by Liv Morgan. There's no other way of putting it. She's not ready. She doesn't deserve to be in that spot. Tiffany Stratton deserves that spot more than Liv Morgan does. The reactions are speaking otherwise. We'll see, Kevin, get to the United States, get to the week-to-week TV of it. Is Tiffany as over in the States? Does his momentum carry over? I don't know. The Australia loved her. Australia loved her. Um, we started a Tiffy time chant during the men's match even. So there you go. All right, pal. So yeah, so then there was a tag team title match. So th- you didn't take a bathroom break during this one, like you thought you would. I, I didn't think you would. Like, I, who? Like, right. who's gonna leave during a wrestling match on a wrestling show? Yeah, you've never been to one before. You just be like, oh yeah, yeah. pal, I'm gonna ignore this. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think you would. Um, I-, I did take a break to make breakfast. I missed most of this yeah. match. Mm-hmm. I was like, like I, I was just like, nah, I'm making breakfast, pal. This is mm-hmm. like, I-, I can't. I, I, I can't. I'm up. I'm, it's like five thirty in the morning right now. I'm not yeah. gonna sit here and watch Fergal Debit have another yeah. match with Pete Dunne and Tyler Bay. Like, I just, I, I did not care at all no, no. about this yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't pay me to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> There's a number of hilarious things coming out of this match. So I, I went in thinking, like, as I'm sitting there, Kevin, I'm watching, so yeah, New Catch Republic come out, and I'm like, oh, this is, the, this is the indie trash portion of the show. I don't care. Like, you know, whatever. New Catch Republic come out. For, like, Judgment Day's entrance sick is just, it's It sick. is, it is like, good, yeah. yeah. Really cool, really cool entrance. They're in the ring. I'm thinking, okay, they're doing the ring announcements. This contest ever one fall, and then like the these three guys like behind me are screaming one fall. You know, they're just going off one fall, whatever. I'm standing. I'm like, am I gonna care here? Like, this could be the down point of the show. Don Mysterio grabs the mic, and I was like, oh my god, yes. And then the whole it was nuclear. And I got messages from a few of my mates. Oh, was that was that piped in? Not piped in at all. Like, everyone was sh- standing up, booing. Like, we, the hate on Dom was nuclear. You would have had an extended experience at the Rumble. Everyone hates the guy. Yes. But it's just, it's so fun to just yell abuse and, like, boo him. You know, loud Dom is a wanker chance over and over again. Um, I want to say as well, Finn Balor in an interview, like, yesterday, he made this comment. He was like, oh... Well, you know, I, I, I love that Dom gets great reactions, but something to this effect. I love that Dom gets, you know, such good reactions, but, you know, if we cannot use Dom as a wanker chance or F you Dom chance or a PG show, I was like, shut up, Fogel. You're like, you're lucky you're involved in something that gets a reaction. You suck. Wow. Like, you know, if, if Dom wasn't involved in this, I would have been in the bathroom. I would, genuinely would have gone to get some chips and go to the bathroom. You know, like, Fogel's lucky Dom's associated with him. So comments like that, I was like, shut up, Fogel. Like, you right. know, yeah. You're 43. The only reason you're relevant is of Dom and Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest, who I want to say the guy like in the row behind me, who I'm certain like, him and his friends were like a buy, and like they made this comment. They're like, oh, so, you know, when when Damian Priest pulled like the straps down and was like roaring and like hulking up during the match, like I was, oh, it's the bisexual Undertaker. And I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Because Damien Priest, when he's got like the eyeliner and he's, you know, he's got like the way he's dressed up, it literally the bisexual Undertaker. Like that is like the perfect thing. I'm going to use that going forward. He's the bi Undertaker pal, Damien Priest. So there you go. Will he cash in money in the bank? No chance in hell. So it's going to be a failed cash in. Disgusting. Anyway, um, the, the heat on Dom was nuclear, as you know. Um, the funniest part of it all to me, aside when he's getting the mic and all booing him, and we're all chanting, you suck, and whatever. As I said, there's like a five-year-old girl, a nine-year-old girl, like, just basically kneeling next to me. So keep in mind, there's a young children, you know, in the bay. This row of dudes behind me, okay? There's like, you know, it's like silence. These guys, loud, I'm not going to say the actual word. 
F you, Dom! Like, they're screaming, F you, Dom. They started an F you, Dom chant. <laughs> screaming, F you, Dom. I'm like, okay, let's have some class here. Like, these are literal, this is like a kindergarten girl and, like, some, like, second grade girl. Like, let's have a bit of class here. Yes. Like, are we really going to be scra- Like, they're sitting, like, right behind. Like, if, if I'm, if I'm like, the, the nine-year-old here, they're, like, literally, like, right here, right the row behind, <laughs> screaming, F you, Dom! F you, Dom! Like, screaming the F word. I'm like, can we have some class here? Come on. Yeah, like, I, I do, do I do think, I do agree. I hate, I mean, I hate to say it, but I agree with Fergie on that. Like, come on. Yeah. It's, it's a PG show, bro. And it, it's just Rey Mysterio's son. Like, what, what has Rey Mysterio's son done to you personally? That, that you're chanting F you, Dom, to him. I get it, it's fun to hate yeah. him, but I mean, come on, bro. This yeah, kid's that in the chan- crowd. I, I agree with Fergal on that one. I think that's unnecessary. This I was kid's thinking, in the like, crowd. this is not needed. Yeah. Like, like we, we can accomplish everything we want to by, by booing Dom, saying you suck, Dom, all PG. And then, like, the Dom is a wanker chant, which is like borderline. Like, that's like a Australian UK version of just Dom sucks, basically. Right. So, you know, those chants are fine. When I've got a, a row of dudes, sitting behind like literal primary school children screaming f you dom like this is just this is unnecessary like have some have some social like you know read the room you know so there was that anyway shock horror pal judgment day win anything else you want to say uh not really i just i just say this then we move to the next match um i was i was making breakfast and i heard like like i had the sound going on in the background and i and like like i just heard for like three minutes it was like quiet and I was like, oh, I guess my feed went out. Like, I don't know what happened. I go there and it's just like, the show's just playing and there's no noise. And I assume that's when the mm-hmm. F.U. Dom chants were going on. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. like the part where he's trying to talk when he's like doing um the intro for Fergie and, yeah. and Damien. And like, I couldn't hear anything. I was like, what is going on? It's just booze. Like, yeah. why, why are they booing the ring announcer? Like, all I heard was, oh, from mm-hmm. Ireland. And you just hear boo. And I was like, why are they booing the ring announcer? Like, what, what is, like, they've been booing Samantha Irvin, bro. So I ran out. I was like, oh, it's Dominic. There's Dominic getting showered with booze, yeah, yeah. pal. Yeah, and like, and with that, yeah, because basically what happened in the truck is because of the the people, like the guys behind me, who was starting F U Dom chants, which I wasn't a fan. I was I was not a fan of those, by the way. Like that that was classless. I, I don't like shouting F U to around. It seems a bit it's over the top. Anyway, those chants were the ones that they like that the, the feed would go quiet for like a minute at a time, apparently, because of like stuff yeah. like that. Um, which I mean, probably fair enough. Like I yeah. get that. But so there was that. Um, everyone hates Dom. The match was, I guess, good. You know, I didn't really watch, the, pay attention to the ring work as much. It was more so just like you clap when the heels are, or the, when the faces are doing something, cheer when they do well. There, there was a like a, a big neck beard, in, like the row in front of me, like a really fat neck beard who was, you know, who'd start chants, big strong boy, big strong boy. I'm, I'm not chanting big strong boy, the another who? grown man. The who? I know. Like, who I'm is not that, chanting. Who is big, that for? Is that for Tyler Bate or something? Yeah, Tyler Bate, big strong boy chants. I'm like, I'm not chanting big, strong boy, another grown man. Have some respect. Anyway, so there's Ugh. that. Let's move on. Ugh, that's gross. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> that threw me off my game for a minute. Uh, so, yeah, so then yeah. the men's elimination chamber match. No. Oh, you want to, oh yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we got to talk about the wall effect first. Right, I forgot about that. This was the thing I was looking forward to most on this show. Yes. This was like... I, like, I was just wondering, because obviously with this, you know, Cody's going to be on it, right? So I get to see the Cody entrance. The Codester, you know, pal. Me, pal, so firstly, like, I, you know, I got my phone out, right? I'm ready for the like, Grayson Waller's entrance I was ready for. Got my phone out. I'm recording. I'm ready to go. Introducing the 115 million hit band, Austin Theory. I was like, who cares? And then we're all booing Theory. No one wanted to see Theory. Like, who, sit, pal, who walks in off the stadium and goes, I want to say theory tonight. Disgusting. I know. Yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I uh, give you my objective analysis on this on this segment before you go? Yep. Yep. I gotta say this about this segment. Ah man, um, I I didn't think it was that good. Mm. Like like yeah. from watching it yeah. from home, like I get it live. You know, you saw Cody and Rollins and and all that. You the experience, but watching it from home, I was like, man, this um, this didn't really accomplish anything. Yeah, like yeah, like uh, Cody comes out and he's like, "I want to face the Rock," and then Rollins is like, "Brother, I got your back," mm. and I'm like, "Why? Like, why are these two a tag team or whatever? Why are these two aligned? Mm. There's no yeah. real reason for it. Like, this story is supposed to be about Cody versus the Bloodline. 
And now Rollins is here. Like, I have my championship, bro. I, I, I'm here, bro. I'm by your side. Like, you should be worried about who's going to face you. You have a number one contenders match coming on next. Like, you should be worried about that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I get it. You got to get Rollins on the show because he's injured. You got to get him on the show. You got to get Cody on the show. It's a big yeah. show in Perth. Could they not have done something? I don't know. Like, could they not have done Cody and Rollins versus Theory and Grayson Waller? Like, just have them beat the hell out of them for like seven and a half minutes? Yeah. I, I think I think that would have accomplished more than the talk show segment yeah. that we got. Like, you just have like, you know, Cody hits the the um the crossroads, Rollins is a curb stop, you know, they beat up Theory, Theory's bumping around, you get a w- quick yeah. one, two, three, five minute match, six five and a half, six, seven minute match. Like I I, yeah. I don't know. That that's just me. That's the way I I, uh, I took it. No, I, I agree with you. I'm realistically, this was just the segment they did on Raw. But they had Grayson Waller there and they just rehashed the whole segment. Yeah. The Cody saying, I'm going to fight Samoans. Rollins saying, I've got your back. That was literally the segment. As you say, it was, it was essentially something, just something they could do to get the Cody entrance and the Rollins entrance on the show so that people like me could experience that. Right. Because at, on the whole, The Rock, I mean, he was offered millions and millions and millions to come along with this and he didn't. Roman wasn't there. Brock Lesnar, obviously, there's everything with him now. He, he won't be here. Sam Punk, like all these wrestlers who you thought a month ago were going to be here, none of them, for all their own different circumstances, were there. Um, so, you, obviously, you've got now Cody and Rollins. I need to get them on the show somehow. I agree with you. I think Cody and Rollins versus Waller and Theory, have them have a seven-minute match. As you say, beat up Theory most of the match. Rollins is looking down the barrel of the camera being like, I'm coming for you, Tribal Chief, or whatever you want to do. Have them making references to them, hyping up that, you know, we're a team, like, you know, Cody and Rollins in action. That would have been good. Regardless, we, I saw the Cody entrance. Um, yeah. I want to say, so yeah, Theory, whatever, who cares? Waller comes out, great reaction. Everyone loves Waller. He does a shoey with the UFC guy, Cole. Then Rollins comes out, really good entrance. Rollins, his entrance, if it wasn't overshadowed so brutally by Cody's, then like two minutes later... It was like it's like the best entrance on the show, just about. But then Cody comes out, and you know Rollins has like the big burn it down and super loud, and you see like the flames go up, and there's like the the singing, and you know it's a great entrance in its own right. It's like a legitimate top guy sort of main event entrance, obviously. And then Cody comes out, and uh, you messaged me something similar to this. But Cody's entrance is it, it's that Roman tier, it's that you know Triple H tier. It's gonna it's that entrance which. In 10 years' time, when he's part time, it's going to be like, oh my God, I get to go to WrestleMania and see the Cody entrance. Like, it's, it's on that level of entrance. Live, it is unbelievable. You know, one thing I noticed to this point in the show, this was like an hour and a half in at this stage, nothing had made the entire crowd stand up and record. Nothing. This, when the lights went out, everyone was standing up. Everyone's standing up, phones out, like recording. I, I was one of them. Oh my God. You know, so yeah, you know, you know, do the big whoa, unbelievable! Like it, it was like a chill sort of moment. Like everyone was just, oh, it was nuts. Fifty-two thousand people, deafening. They do the big pyro show. That was the first time they used pyro at that stage in the night. Scared the crap out of me. Like I'm, I'm saying that whoa, and then Paul Levesque <laughs> triggers like whoever from TKO to set off all the pyrotechnics, and then the guys just like, and then like pyro is going off. And then pyro started going off like over the stadium as well. I'm like, how much pyro does Cody Runnels get? Like, what the uh, hell, bro? The the graphic on TV, the way they presented that was crazy. So they did a cut to the yeah. the arena, and they had Cody's American Nightmare logo pop mm. up on the on the screen, like outside on the outside of like Australia. Oh, and yeah. then you saw then they cut back to that when the when the pyro went off. You just saw the pyro going off. Oh, oh. it was awesome, man. Yeah, Cody's entrance is unbelievable and it's that like you said that he has that it factor that makes everybody want to record everybody want to capture the moment that's what separates the the big stars from the average wrestler that's just like cody's on that level now yeah and you know obviously we have i mean portions of not portions really our audience but portions of the wrestling community namely who came through the smart buses generation like me who just still hate cody and it's like i mean okay fair he was stardust whatever but you go to these shows and, you know, you experience that where the entire arena, that was the first time and really the only time of the night before Rhea Ripley 
where everyone was up, everyone's recording, everyone does the wall. It, it felt epic. I sat down after Cody came out. I was like, oh my God, that was insane. Like that was so cool. You know, saying that live because it got me thinking like all time wrestling entrances. Obviously, I haven't seen The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I haven't seen like like a real like Triple H, like a WrestleMania 30, like a, like a Terminator entrance or a really gimmicky Triple H motorhead entrance. I haven't seen those sort of entrances in person. I would have loved to, but this is just about as close I'll get to like an epic, like top tier wrestling entrance. Like this had everything, you know, it makes me wish I was, yeah, WrestleMania 28, for instance, and saying that, but nonetheless, Cody comes out, just awesome. So that was the Cody entrance, the segment as we touched on, whatever, just a filler segment, not much really there. You know, Grayson Waller's, I felt bad for him because he's in Australia at the press conference. He got to be like himself and really get the crowd going here. He's obviously like taking a big backseat to the Cody Rollins bloodline drama, whatever's going on with this WrestleMania 40 main event situation. So all Waller's there to do, because he's, he's a heel normally, but because he's in Australia, he's a face. He's just like, you know, respectfully acknowledge the tribal chief. And like, he's trying not to get booed, booed. Cause we're not going to book. It was a bit awkward, but nonetheless, it was, yeah. segment was fine. Rollins is going to be cleared, even though he's been cleared for like weeks. Cody wants the rock or something, I guess. I, I think I think you do Cody versus Rock night one, Cody Roman night two, I think. And then you, you do some gimmick where it's like, oh, Rock's trying to soften up Cody for Roman or I don't know, something like that. Because you, you can't main event headline a Rock match at WrestleMania 40. The Rock can't wrestle more than five minutes. So have like a quick Cody Rock spectacle night one. And then you do your big Cody Roman epic night two. I don't know. That's my opinion. There you go, pal. Yeah, I, mean, I don't really have much to add to that. We can talk yeah. about that later on. Um, yep. So let's talk about the men's chamber match. Mm -hmm. So overall, like we know CM Punk was supposed to be in this. CM Punk was supposed to win it. Um, mm -hmm. That unfortunately didn't take place. So um, I thought what we got in his place was a solid match. You know, it was all right. Like it was good. Like maybe three star match. If I had to give it like a rating. Um, I, I, I saw some people that were like really hyping up Logan Paul. Like, oh, he's a natural heel. Cause he drew like the horns on the on the chamber glass and i'm like i guess like i guess that like sure yeah like that's what makes him a heel because he's pretending to be a devil like okay cool um man the the biggest takeaway i had from this match though is randy orton mm -hmm. randy orton was bad he looked like to be in real bad shape like i it was kind of sad to see bro as somebody that's like been watching randy orton pretty much my whole life he's been on on wwe tv and in a prominent spot it was just sad to see him go out like this, man. Like he looked like he couldn't go, he couldn't get through the match. Like he took, he did that DDT and then he was done. Yeah, like just about. Like you could tell that, uh, like somebody else with not like that's just not as much, uh, not as prideful as like a Randy Orton would have been like, you know, I'm hurt, bro. Take me out of the match. But he was just like, like just withstanding through the pain and yeah. the refs were checking on him and I was just like, man, this is this is rough. Man, mm -hmm. I don't know, bro. I don't know. What, what did you think? Like, did did it translate the same way live as it did in person? Like, in terms of like Randy Orton's injury, live you could tell. Like, he's the thing with this Orton situation. He's always he's naturally a very good seller. Yes. So how much of that's him selling, making it look worse? He clearly is in legitimate pain though, because yeah. uh, he obviously has the, like as you mentioned, he had the big back surgery. He's out like a year and a half. We all know the situation. He has a rod in his back. Yeah, he's had to sit on a plane for 30 hours or 25 hours or whatever to get to Perth. So he's been sat there just like like that on a plane, which hardly helps you back. Uh, and then he comes out for this. He's in a chamber match. He's taken spots. You can tell his, his back's not in great shape. Uh, was this the best match for him to be working? I don't know. Uh, what he does at WrestleMania, I don't know either. But there, there are talks that you do a big multi-man match involving the US title or... Logan Paul, LA Knight, Styles, Orton, something, some combination of that. That cannot be a ladder match unless you want Randy Orton to be killed. Like, it, like it, you need to be smart with how you use Randy Orton. This, this is like a big time, this is like a celebrity wrestler. Like, Orton came out, he, he was another one. Everyone's filming. Yeah. Everyone's, you know, the people are like, I'm vibing along to voices. Like, that song's great live. It you is. Know, like, Orton comes out. This is a, a big size. Randy F and Orton. So, you know, he comes out, but yeah, the back, a little, it translated, like live, you could tell 
it was probably worse on screen because you can see everything really clearly when you're watching it right in front of you. But live, you can see it from 200 feet away. Like the, his back's bad. Like it's, it's, you know, some of us selling, but his back is not in a great state. So there's that. Match itself, as we discussed, Women's Chamber was just better. Um, this match was, it wasn't bad. It was a, I don't know what I'd give it, 3.5 stars. Like it was good. Like it wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't it wasn't great. Like the live audience, we weren't captivated. Like I'll speak behalf on behalf of all fifty two thousand people in Optus Stadium. We weren't captivated. We weren't that into it, you know. Um, yeah, the entrances were cool. Lashley's entrance was actually way better than I thought it would be. Like live Lashley's entrance is sick. Awesome, yeah. Uh, too bad he, he really has no character. Uh, like I say that, you know, he's the Almighty. But like, what does that mean for the crowd? What can the crowd? Oh, he's going to chant, Almighty, Almighty. Like, no, no. So th- there was like one Bobby Lashley chant and he speared Logan Paul, which is like the moment of the match. And that was like really cool. Uh, Orton's RKO to Logan Paul was a highlight as well. That got a great reaction. Um, everyone was chanting, like when Logan got speared through the pod, everyone's chanting, you deserve it. <laughs> and like, you know, holy bleep, holy bleep. Everyone was just, you know, cheering. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, McIntyre wins. Uh I guess predictable winner. Yes. Makes sense. The most logical winner here. Uh, he's on the run of his career, pal. So he's going to march into WrestleMania, taking on a crippled Seth Rollins. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah. Matt, he's he's got to be Seth Rollins, bro. After the way Roman is buried Seth Rollins, Rock yeah. is buried Seth Rollins. After the way he's looked like a jobber and it's like second fiddle. Yeah. McIntyre has to beat him handily. Um, yeah, I mean, Cody's inadvertently buried Rollins as well, being like, I mean, I've already beaten you, like, three times, like, respectfully. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah, so with this match, yeah, I thought it was predictable, uh, which is, I mean, yeah, we all knew, like, who else is going to win? Like, did you really? Um, I, I really enjoyed the way Logan Paul was booked. That Logan Paul mm. was booked as, like, the little brother in this match. Like, hey, you don't belong here, bro. You know, like, the whole thing with Kevin Owens, like, headbutting the glass, and Logan's like, oh, he's crazy. Oh, he's crazy. Um... Yeah, that was funny. Uh, Kevin Owens was like, he looked like Perk Angle. Like, I, I think he's been he's been chilling with with Kurt Angle, taking some perks, pal. Uh, and he he's been, <laughs> you funny. know, no real knowledge of that, but he was just acting like Perk Angle out there, just going wild. Mm-hmm. I I thought, yeah. yeah, I thought like like Logan Paul being booked as a little brother was probably like the best part of like if you're talking the in ring psychology and what I enjoyed the most, like going like Ooh. of the match. He added an extra element to it. Um, LA Knight was awesome when he had his, you know, he had his his moments and the crowds chanting for him. Yeah, uh, I did think it was kind of weird having AJ Styles just come out and destroy him. I'm like, okay, like they're they're beefing. Like, what are they? Like, why is AJ so mad at LA Knight, bro? Like, well, uh, he has a Slim Jim sponsorship. Um, Knight cost him the chance of being the chamber. Right. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay, so what? So they're beefing, like. What, LA Knight's mad that AJ Styles is a poppin' Twitch channel and AJ Styles is mad that LA Knight has a Slim Jim sponsorship? Like, make it interesting at least, bro. Like, AJ's there looking yeah. jacked as hell. Can we get yeah. some goofy, maybe some goofy entertainment to it, pal? I'm just not, I'm not really buying, like, oh my god. And then people are, the best part about that was AJ making the jokes, like, oh, he, he, um, all right, I'm sorry, Twitter making the jokes about AJ, saying, like, oh, AJ flew halfway across the world. He, he found out that the earth isn't flat. And he did all this just to just to jump LA Knight and cost him an opportunity at the WWE Championship. So that that yeah. was funny. Um, yeah. Um. You know, just a couple more things before we move on. Um. This was the match where all the like, the production issues happened. So as I mentioned earlier, the the first en- the first entrant person came out of the chamber, which I, I forget. Uh, LA Knight came out. No, no, no. So Owens came out. He was the first one released from the pod. So I do the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Owens gets released. Within like thirty seconds. Another countdown time is like showing on the screen. I don't know if that happened on like the the live one, but in the arena, it was showing like another countdown. And everyone, like, my whole body is like, what the F is this? We just saw one like 10 seconds ago. And then the countdown clock goes away and then it runs out. And then the screens just show elimination chamber again. And then we just started the we can't see chant and you effed up. Like we we're just, you know, chanting. Like it was, it was really weird. Like it was strange. Um, so those production issues happen cool um la night was quite over uh yeah that's that's about the analysis for the match also one more thing um just before you go so yeah la night as you mentioned he gets jumped by aj styles and everyone's just like boo boo you know and la night gets eliminated those like the aforementioned five-year-old girl and like the nine-year-old 
the five-year-old was legitimately crying. Uh-huh. Like she was legitimately upset. You know, like it like ruined the rest of the show for her because of AJ Styles, this asshole who's cost LA Knight the match. You're a dickhead, Styles. You made this little girl cry. Um, so she was yeah, legitimately upset. You know, and like, yeah, I was partly wish the camera showed that as like a, like a, a crying Miz girl moment, but they didn't. Um, so that being said, yeah, that was the chamber match. Like, whatever. Um, I guess I saw I, I got sent this. You know, because obviously they're doing I guess Styles versus Knight. Maybe if that's a singles match or it's a SmackDown match. I don't know. There's going to be a match with Randy Orton or something. There's there's a bunch of these like little matches on from like the SmackDown side of things. A smarky, I, I hate using this word, but like one of these wrestling Twitter tweets where it was like, well, I'm hoping for a multi-man match at WrestleMania featuring Logan Paul, LA Knight, Styles, Orton, yada, yada, to spare us, to spare us from a multitude of 3.25s come WrestleMania. I'm like, God, that's just the most like, ugh. I, I, uh, I, I want to see end. Randy Orton versus Logan Paul. That's a spectacle match, bro. I know. Like, give, give us that. That's two legitimate mainstream superstars having yeah. a battle pal because logan paul hit randy order with some nux pal with some brass yeah. nux oh to, to spare us from some smackdown 3.25 uh, how about you shut up like, like, it, it, yeah. I, know, like I i hear that i'm like bang at these shows like it's just like oh my god it's so like yeah, yeah it's, we don't we don't need a random multi-man match featuring randy orton on the middle of the card in a wrestlemania again we've had enough of those throughout his career i know that happened in 2018 we've, we've been there done that have randy orton versus logan paul that that match sells itself that's that's big time you can sell that on espn very legitimately and do la knight versus aj styles yeah. la knight's like the over guy styles is the the heel yeah there you go it's, that match isn't gonna be like it's AJ Styles. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll talk more about that, pal. All right. Yeah. So, um, oh, man, sorry, I've had a long weekend. Um, main event. Oh, you, you, you've had a long weekend, pal. Yeah, we uh, all I've have, pal. Different <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel you. Uh, yeah. every week is a long weekend for me. Rhea Ripley <laughs> versus Nia Jax. Yes. The main event. Um, I gotta be yeah. honest. I got. I gotta be honest, bro. I ran out of gas come the main event like i was yeah. into it okay yeah. Rhea ripley's having her entrance nia jack's having her entrance crowd is booing nia crowd's going crazy for Rhea. they're going crazy out here cole they're going crazy so um that was cool at all and then the bell rang the damn bell rang and i was like i i can't i can't stomach this like just i was just like fast forward to the part where Rhea hits her finish and everybody's yeah. like oh big yeah. feet oh my god she did this to nia she picked her up just fast forward yeah. to that i was like yeah. I, I I was tapped out, bro. Like I yeah. I, I, yeah. I I'll say this: if WWE mm-hmm. put this show on in the United States of America, this show would have got <laughs> we want refunds. Like <laughs> I, I honestly, bro. Like I just yeah. I just like we want refunds. Cancel Peacock would have been trending on Twitter. Like th- th- this is ridiculous, pal. I-, I know you had a great time, and I'm not trying to like take any of that away no, from no, you. No, no, no. Fully understand, but if this is in St. Petersburg. Yes, yeah, so if this is in St. Petersburg, I'm not going. I'm not making a four-hour drive. I'm not dragging my girlfriend four hours uh, up the up the street in, in Florida uh, to go watch Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax in the main event of a pay-per-view. Like, this yeah. is ridiculous, bro. They, 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 they couldn't sell out the arena. I was looking up the capacity. Um, Ed Sheeran sold 73,000 tickets to have a concert in Perth in Optus Stadium. WWE held 20,000 short of that, pal. They, they could have put a little bit, a little bit of effort into this, a little, a little effort into the booking. Like, when, when was the first match announced? Like ten days prior to the event was yeah. when they announced the first match. Yeah, if this happens in Saint Petersburg, nobody like people are booing Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax out of the building. We're getting beach balls, pal. We're getting JBL chants. JBLs can be on the pre on the kickoff show. Like, oh, they love me, Maggle. Oh, like, I'm sorry, bro. This was. Yeah, I, I'm glad you had a great time though. I mean, you're not wrong with any of that. And um, we discussed this in the preview that as a card, like objectively, just as a card, it's like a three, four out of 10. Like it's like a low hype card. There weren't really any matches or anything on here, which was like, oh my God. A uh, WWE was just taking advantage of the fact that the Perth government are paying them a ridiculous amount of money to just do a stadium show. So that's a large, that, that's just what this was. Um, <clears throat> having a main event though, that being said, I understand, I totally get it. 
Trust me, I understand from your I, your point, everyone's point of view, who's not Australian. I get it. But like <laughs> live and for Rhea Ripley generally, just like not just Rhea Ripley in Australia, just Rhea generally as like the female face of WWE, this was like her crowning moment really in front of a stadium of her fans. Like the, the reaction when she came out, her entrance, it was second only to Cody. Like the entrance itself, it wasn't as cool as the entrance you got at Saudi like a few months ago. Odd, you know, like Rhea gets a better entrance in Saudi than literally in her home nation. Okay, good one, Nick Khan. Thanks for giving Makes me a yeah. Anyway, whatever. So Rhea, Rhea Ripley comes out. Her theme song live, like I'm not into that sort of music, like the oh, sort of incredible. goth, emo. But, it's incredible. Uh, her theme song is incredible live. Oh, live, it's nuts. Like, yeah. It's so good. You know, like, I now, I've got that song hooked in my head now. Like, it's, it's catchy, and it, like, it hits. It's so like, good. Like, yeah, her entrance is, is great. She has, like, she's, like, hugging fans. She has, like, the Australian flag. And as I said, for people who aren't Australian, this is, like, who gives a flying F? Like, like Rhea is in Australia, and it'll be the same thing when, like, Gunther's in Europe, in, like, Bash of Berlin. It's like, oh, eh. It's like, for me, it's like, oh, whatever. You know, okay, great. He has more of his. He's gonna have, Gunther's gonna be his family in the front row as he annihilates Sami Zayn to win the world title. Whatever, whatever happens in Berlin. But for now, it's like you know, Rhea Ripley. Oh my God, yeah, she faces Nia Jax. Nia did her job. No, not a single soul in that arena wanted to see Nia Jax win or succeed or hit a move. Everyone wanted to see Nia Jax get beat up. Everyone was like booing. I was just randomly yelling out, "You suck, Nia!" Like, just, you know, you just randomly yell out, you know, I was like, no one likes you! You know, just, or just yelling out. Um, yeah, they do the match. The table doesn't break on, like, the like the, the table spot. Nia Jax then proceeds to stand on the chair, and then I yell out, don't break the chair, Nia! Oh, and then my she proceeded God. To, proceeded to jump through the... Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the, 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 the obese guy in front of me wasn't a fan of that, but uh, oh it's not wrong. Oh, my God. Um, so yeah, Nia jumps through the table, breaks the table. Um, Nia Jax. So I was want to say when Rhea Ripley's lying dead on the mat in the middle of the ring, and Nia Jax, I forget what the move's called. Basically, she just like jumps on her, and like her back lands on Rhea's chest. So she she just jumps on her. I'm like, well, that just hurts. That's like 120 kilograms of dead Nia Jax weight just landing on Rhea Ripley. Like that just hurts. Yeah. You know, I, like I'm like watching that live, especially like, obviously. We're all watching the same show, but just being there live, I'm like, ow. Like, it really, like, and that just, that, that, there's nothing fun about that. Like, these wrestlers put themselves through hell a lot of the time. Like, Rhea Ripley's getting jumped on by Nia Jax, who weighs, like, double my weight. Like, it's unbelievable. Anyway, so they do the match. Rhea wins. Obviously, Rhea was never going to lose this match. Uh, they put a picture on Twitter, pal. Becky Lynch, pal. Rebecca Good. She's standing in, like, the aisleway at Optus Stadium watching... You know, uh, like she was standing where there should have been seats. As you say, 52,000 tickets end up being what they sold in the attendance. There are a bunch of empty seats in my bay. So I don't know how many, like, I don't know if that was 52,000. I don't know whether they fudged that number. Paul Levesque came out before the main event. We got a bit more motorhead pal. Bow down to the bow. Like he came out and he was like, you've been a great audience. The fans back, the, the, the people back there. The, all the wrestlers, we thank you, the WWE Universe. We thank you, Perth, for being a great city for WWE. You know, Paul Vex cutting his promo, whatever, we're all cheering. I don't think it was 52,000. I think it was more like 40,000, like being there. I don't think that was 50,000 people, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, Rhea, Rhea wins. The last, like the show goes off the air. We got like 10 extra minutes after the show went off the air. It was just Rhea hugging people ringside, crying, hugging fans. Wrap, you know, wrapping an Australian flag around her and like posing with it, you know, crying, hugging her sister like four different times. It was all happening, pal. Huge emotional moment, pal. You were finishing off your breakfast, running errands, going to the gym, going to the movies, going to Best Buy. You were going about your day, pal. Meanwhile, I'm there, 9.30 p.m., cheering, getting laryngitis from Nick Khan, trying to figure out, okay, how do I get from my like from Optus Stadium to my accommodation when like half of Australia is seemingly trying to leave Optus Stadium at once. Anyway, good fun. Oh my God. Um, I just want to say a couple things, but in closing, so Brock Lesnar versus Dominic Mysterio is supposed to take place at this show. That's the rumor. Mm -hmm. 
Man, what they're doing with the Brock, bro, like, I'm trying to be very careful how I say this. Yeah. It doesn't seem right, how they're doing Brock right now. Like, Brock's getting the Chris Ben Wall treatment. Mm-hmm. And, okay, he, he, he had some illicit text messages with a woman leak. Does that make him a horrifying person? Like, was he... I don't know. We don't know enough to really comment on it. That's the thing. We don't know enough. Like, there's not enough information out there. Mm-hmm. If it turns yeah. out that this is the only thing that, that's come mm-hmm. out about yeah. Brock that he was involved yeah. in... And he's being taken off the cover of the game. He's being taken out. He's been scrubbed from 2K24 and title. You can't even play as him unless you know how to hack in and get the files like a lot of these great content creators do. Um, <laughs> he he got yeah. removed from the Rumble. Like, come on, bro. Like, it, it's Brock Lesnar. And yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Everybody has a personal life, man. Mm. Uh, my honest opinion on what's happening with that there is definitely more. I don't it's know gotta how much be. More. Yeah. There is more. Because if Brock Lesnar allegedly being like, oh yes, just you know, send those pics of you paying and like, oh you know, again, let's made up sometime. If if that and what what's come out or what we know already, if that is what is getting Brock Lesnar the Chris Ben Wall treatment, then 95% of the wrestling industry, or maybe not 95%, but like a lot of the wrestling industry and people have been involved in it. Can, cannot be mentioned ever again if stuff like that like there's a lot of shade if like I, I agree with you i think that there has to be more i think what's happened is you know other women or lawyers have gone to wwe or tko and gone we have this 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 and this on vince we have this this on brock we have this this on this guy this this on this guy we're, we're, we're gonna come out with this and they're like do not until after wrestlemania like I think that's I think that's what's happening right yeah. now. They're like, put a cloche on it for now, just for like a month. Then share your story. Do what we'll handle it then. And I think right. they, they they're going okay. Brock's and Brock has to be involved more than once here if they're giving him the, the Benoit treatment. That's how I'm I'm doing it. Right. Because no way this what we've seen so far warrants the Chris Benoit treatment. Chris Benoit killed himself and his family, like murdered them, and justifiably has been like erased from history. That is completely justified. Anyone who disagrees, you shouldn't have an opinion. But like this, it's just a bit like, uh, that's, yeah, a bit how you going, Brock. I mean, you, you have a wife, like you're Brock Lesnar, like really? Like how you yeah. going, like really? Right. Yeah, th- that's all this is. Like, Yeah. And what the, uh, the other yeah. side of it is too, maybe like, okay, WWE's just like, yeah, we're going to put him on a hiatus right now. Let this blow over and then we'll bring him back for SummerSlam. We'll put him in the game later on once everything quiets mm-hmm. down. Um, you know, they didn't want any association with that. I mean, that Vince story came out, what, a day before the Royal Rumble? So, yeah, I mean, I understand, like, okay, you want to take him off the Royal Rumble because you don't want, like, this horrible story that Brock's attached to coming out, and then Brock's just, like, there the day, the next day, choke slamming people and f 5 and people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. Yeah. Maybe it's a temporary thing. Maybe there's not more on him coming out. I don't know. And I want to say this, too. If I, if I had any kind of, like, creative influence with the WWE, like, if I was Brian Gowitz, for example, and mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, I'd be like, hey, Paul, look, Triple H, we go way back, you know, I was here in the Attitude Era, like, you know, I have a, I, I have a, a, nose, a, a good, like, idea what's going on in wrestling. I would say, hey, why don't we scrap the men's Elimination Chamber match? We already got one. We don't need, we don't need to do a man and a women's match each, yes. each time around. We have the women do their thing, and we just get McIntyre versus Randy Orton here in a number one contenders match. Something like that, right? Uh, interpromotional Raw versus SmackDown. The winner goes to face Rollins. Okay, cool. And then you could do, like, whatever. Maybe you have Gunther on the show, the Intercontinental Champion. I don't know. I'm just throwing crazy yeah, ideas yeah, out I, there. I, I think there's Vaser issues with him. That's why he physically couldn't be oh, there. Oh, he couldn't be there. Okay. I, I think if Gunther was all good, they would have done Gunther versus Bronson Reed the ISA title because oh, Reed's Australian. Right. I think that's what was going to happen, but there's, well, there's stuff that yeah. happened. Anyway, there's something came out about Bronson like, Reed, too. Bronson Reed's baby was born early or something, so he couldn't yeah. be at the show. Um, like what you're saying is like, yeah, like instead of doing ch- a second chamber match with the men, which everyone knew who was going to win, it went for like 45 minutes. During it, there was tiffy time chance when Lashley was just dominating and no one cared. Instead of doing that, do like, yeah, a shorter McIntyre Orton match that maybe doesn't injure Randy Orton as much and you get McIntyre in the number one contendership and maybe do another match. Yeah, I do LA Knight versus Logan Paul for the US title. You know, something like that. Probably like not Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, like triple threat or something. Yeah, like yeah. You could get two. You could do two other matches in that forty-minute span where that men's chamber yeah. match was on. All right, pal. Yeah. So, any closing thoughts about your experience in, in Perth? Any 
first time WWE show. And, and where do you want to? How do you want to end this before we go around um, the world, pal? I'll bring up. I'll bring up one. Not negative, but one thing, one other little fan experience. I thought, geez, like, come on. So during the um during the women's chamber match, when Raquel came out of her pod, those guys who you know made the uh, the, the bisexual Undertaker line about Damian Priest, like, you know, that, that would, you could hear them the whole night. One of them goes, ah, oh, where, where was she on January sixth? I'm like, oh. I'm like, people oh. like that just ruin everything, you know. One, who cares? Two, really? Uh, you know, like I'm I'm trying to sit here and enjoy a wrestling show. I don't need some smart ass twenty something year old being like, <laughs> what's their political affiliation? I don't give a flying f. I'm trying to watch a women's chamber match. I'm trying to experience the WWE. Shut up! Like I, it doesn't like. Uh, anyway, so that was that. That was just cringe. I I, I was gonna. I wasn't gonna make a scene or anything. I was just like, God, it's, people are just anyway. So that was that. Um, I leave the show. Whatever, awesome experience. I'd say the whole just overall. Um, I'd give the show a, as a live experience. It was amazing. Um, you know, when you break down like you review it and for like you watching it, probably wasn't as good. Obviously, you know, understandably so. It's not like yeah. catered for you. This show is catered for Australia exactly really yeah. well. Exactly. Um, they did a great job for, for me attending my first show, my first big event. Loved it. Um, if they'd come back to Australia, if, I don't think it'd be Perth again. It'd probably be either the MCG or they'll do something in Sydney, maybe. Uh, so probably a big stadium show there, maybe in a few years' time. I don't know. Uh, but WWE hit a home run. Um, the, the crowd was in it the whole weekend. I had a blast. Um, hopefully this voice situation clears itself, pal. Thanks to Nick Khan and the and the the airport in Perth, pal. Um, so we'll see how we go. But yeah, great experience. And um, that's all from I guess myself. With the chamber um so yeah take it away pal what do you yeah. want to do yeah yeah for i'll just say this yeah for like i said like you said sorry for australia this was as good as they could do it and we've seen it with wwe what they did with puerto rico and like in london and just to name a few in like saudi arabia but those cards like overall were just better like objectively like you know yeah, like yeah. like the like the puerto rican card for backlash was just a good card and this one suffered you know brock, if brock and dominic had been on this show uh who knows if punk had been there like who knows how good this would have been so with the the cards they were dealt, WWE did yeah. they you know they put their best foot forward. Like me watching it, I'd give it like a five out of ten. You know, it wasn't like the best wrestling wow. show that I've ever wow. seen. Yeah, well, that, that wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, what one match I was so uninterested in that I just was like gonna make breakfast. Like I do not care about watching Fergie and Pete Dunne. Like okay, Pete Dunne stepped on Fergie's thumbs. Oh my god, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, the men's chamber match, the finish, whatever. Logan Paul cost Randy Orton the match after I'm watching Randy Orton, one of my like childhood idols die from back pain. I'm like, okay, Drew McIntyre wins because Logan Paul helped him. Like, did we really need that? Like, okay, McIntyre's a heel, whatever. It's nineteen eighty five again. McIntyre needs to cheat to win, bro. I, I just it didn't it, it didn't hit for me. You know, like like I like you like it would. All right, pal, I, I'm done. I'm done. So I'm glad you had a great time. Like you said, for Australia, this was great. Um, yeah. So I'm ready to go around the world. If you are, pal, I can't wait to sure, talk about I'm this. Me, I can't me, wait. Now, I, I'll, after this past before you go, after this past like few days, I've been on flights. I've been in airports. I really do feel like I'm going around the world, around, around the, the world, world. pal. Around pal, we're world, stopping in Clearwater, Florida, pal. World. We're stopping in Clearwater, Florida. Oh, uh, spinning, spinning. Stop it, clear water, baby. Here we go. Okay, so th there's Jacksonville. Clear um, water's to the left of that. To the left, okay. Right by You're Tampa. Right about there. I know how... Yep, yeah, right about there. Yep, yep, right yep. about there, pal. So yeah, so we're in Clearwater, Florida, pal. That's the home of Terry Balea. <laughs> so okay, so as some of you know, I I, I study journalism, um, hence the wrestling uncovered theme of my channel. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So I'm finishing up my degree, right? And I'm in. The, I'm sitting in this elective class that I need to graduate. The class really does nothing for me. Like I'm not learning a damn thing. It's open book tests, open book quizzes, like open notes. The teacher doesn't care. The professor doesn't care. So you know, he emails us the lesson plan like like two hours before the class. And I'm sitting in this class on Wednesday night as you're like traveling to Perth. And, yeah. Um. I pull up the lesson plan, and literally on the lesson plan, it says uh. Uh, so the the class let me give a context. The class is about media, media law, so like defamation, libel, like 
invasion of privacy like i'm learning about those kind of like the, the ins and outs of the laws behind those things what you can say as a journalist what you can't do like you know so he the the professor draws up the study plan and he's like this is the biggest example of an invasion of privacy lawsuit in the history of the united states of america oh and it's terry gene balea versus <laughs> gawker media so Gawker Media, they own Kotaku and Jezebel and Gawker.com, some some gossip, celebrity gossip websites, video game websites. They own a multitude of websites. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, bro, am I really sitting in a class where I'm going to learn about Terry Jean Balea suing a website for leaking his sex video? So, um... So, what? I know, this is crazy, bro. So I'm like, I'm like okay, this is going to be a fun class. So we get to class... You know, professor talks about some stuff for like 45 minutes. It's a two-hour class. He talks for about 45 minutes. The rest of the class, I want to say a good 30 minutes. He let us out early. A good 30 minutes of the class. We're learning about Hulk Hogan and this, uh, and this court case. And I'm sitting there, and he's like, has anybody ever heard of Hulk Hogan? And there's like 15 people in the classroom. I raise my hand. I'm like, yeah. You know, some other people raise their hands. Like, yeah, we've heard of Hulk Hogan. And he's just like... He's telling us about this. This is like a 75-year-old mm. man, uh, Vietnam War veteran, proud patriot, like just an old man with a cane. And he's telling us about Hulk Hogan's sex tape being leaked on the internet by Gawker.com. And it's in the... It's, there's a little bit, a little section of it in my textbook, in my class textbook. There's a big picture of Terry Jean Balea in my class textbook. I don't have the physical textbook, so I can't pull it out but he passed around this sheet of paper it's a picture of terry jean balea with a black um do-rag on sitting in a courtroom and, it, and it, he's passing it around we're all reading the insert from the textbook it's like a paragraph about this this court this um this court case and i'm just like bro what is what what am i doing right now with my life like what what is what do i gain from this and then he's going in explicit details and he's like, okay, so for those of you who don't know, Terry Balea, uh, he, he, uh, he went over to his best friend's house, Bubba the Sponge, or whatever, that, that, radio, that radio talk show host in Tampa Bay. He's like, yeah, Hulk Hogan went to Bubba the Sponge's house, and Bubba the Sponge wanted Hulk Hogan to have sex with his wife while he records it. And I'm like, I'm listening to this, bro, and I'm like, this is my, this is my lesson for the day this is my class lesson like this is un this is incredible this is unreal and he the way he's saying it so this is, calmly this is incredible so calmly so timid just like yeah hulk hogan went to bubba the love sponge's house had sex with his wife <laughs> little did hulk hogan know or maybe i'm sure maybe hulk hogan did know that bubba the love sponge was recording it so he could consume it in in, in his private time <laughs> And then, uh, you know, no. then it comes out that he's like, oh, uh, this took place in 06. Seven years later, Gawker, Gawker Media publishes an article centered around celebrity sex tapes and the craze around the Kim Kardashian Ray J sex tape and Paris Hilton. And what's the other one from the 90s? Pamela Anderson. These celebrity sex tapes. And then they put a clip, like a, a minute and a half long clip of Hulk Hogan's sex tape on this article. And he's like, you know, what happens in, in the, the bedroom of two consult, uh, consenting adults is their business. So Hulk Hogan attempted to sue Gawker Media for several things like invasion of privacy and um, defamation of character and libel and all this. And then he's like, the court, they threw all of those stances out because... Hulk Hogan allowed this to be recorded. And then he's like, the main topic of the lawsuit is because the, the, it became a question from the judge to the jury. Is Hulk Hogan's sex tape newsworthy? So this multi, are you familiar with this? This multimedia, this multimillion yeah. dollar lawsuit. Hulk Hogan wins like $155 million <laughs> out of this lawsuit. He won $155 million because the jury voted that him having sex on camera is not newsworthy. That's literally how he won $155 million. It had nothing to do, like, they were completely within, it was within their rights to post this on Gawker.com. You 
you know, completely within their rights to share this video of Hulk Hogan without his consent, without his knowledge. He didn't approve of this. Bubba the Love Sponge double-crossed him, tried to get some money, sold it to a media website. That just comes down to, is Terry Belay having sex on camera? Is that newsworthy? And the whole time I was thinking, in my, in my class, I'm thinking about the time you and I talked about Terry Belay getting baptized. <laughs> and I was like, that's not newsworthy, either. But here we are, we're talking about it. We were talking about Terry Belay getting baptized, giving his life to Jesus Christ. And then they were saying, like, this guy, um, this professor from the University of Florida is like, I, I forgot his name, like, Mike Foley. He, he sounds like a wrestler. He's like, his name's close to Mick Foley. Mike Foley, pal, from the University of Florida. It's like, Hulk Hogan having sex is news. But watching Hulk Hogan have sex is not news. So, that's how Hulk Hogan won $155 million, bro. And <laughs> I'm just like, I'm... Bro, I'm just like, can I just leave this class already? Like, I, I got, th I got like three more classes left. I get my degree. I could go on to bigger and better things in my career. I'm done. Like, I don't want to hear about Hulk Hogan anymore, bro. Like, and, and I could tell this guy was like a big Hulk Hogan fan, and cause he, you know, he didn't even touch on like the whole fact that Hogan said the N word in the video, and that's what got him canceled. Like, that wasn't even mentioned at all. The only thing that my, that my professor said was that Hogan's reputation was ruined, but he didn't say why his reputation was ruined. Hulk Hogan's reputation is not ruined because he slept with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. His reputation is ruined because he said the N-word on camera and said that he doesn't want his daughters to date black men. And I'm like, bro, teach, I was like, bro, teach the real thing. Teach the real thing. You're a professor. Te tell the real story. Jesus Christ. I was ready to, like, take over the class, bro. Oh, man. Um, I was so annoyed. Like, this is what I'm paying like eight hundred dollars for for a class to learn about Terry Jean Belay having sex with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. That that that's my college education, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I got one more thing. I'm gonna tell you some Tampa stories. Before before you yes, go ahead. I need to, I need to, I need to respond. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, yes, go. Wow. <laughs> Terry Terry Jane Belaya, Bubba the Love Sponge, hell. Cause Bubba the Love Sponge. Oh my god. Um Wow. I mean I, I, first and foremost, I love the part where you're like and the, the 75 year old is just calmly just explaining what happens. And with with all these situations, we've discussed this. When they're these other serious, controversial, scandalous, like you know, reputation damaging things or reputation altering events or situations when you just bluntly and just calmly describe it it's the funniest thing like without intent it's like unintentionally funny you, you experience this describing all the vince mcmahon scandals in our vince mcmahon bio we are just like you know and the the, the jimmy snooker nancy argentino scandal Vin, vince mcmahon walked into a room with, with local police gave them a briefcase 50 million dollars here shut up yeah my wrestler did nothing wrong bro <laughs> Like Owen Hart falls to his death. <laughs> Vince McMahon sits down with the Hart family. Here's fifty million dollars. Shut up. Yeah, he just made it go away. <laughs> like it's like stuff like that is so hilarious. Yeah, so well, so, well, not the incidents themselves, obviously, but like how we, how they just get bluntly described and accurately described, but it's unintentionally funny. Anyway, so yeah, that whole thing is insane. Pal, you're sitting there. Desperate to finish this degree, listening to a 75 year old Vietnam veteran explaining the, the ins and outs of Terry Blair. Uh, not that he used the N word in the tape or made racially dissensitive comments. Not that, just the fact, oh, well, his reputation got damaged a bit, you know, and it was Gorga Media Pal. So, okay. I cool. Know. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like that. Pal, this, that's like the best around the world thing we may have ever done. Like, that's incredible. Oh, just <laughs> wait. Just wait, pal. All right. Oh, so, God. um, little Tampa tidbits. So, first thing, I'll tell you a little bit more about my weekend. So, I drive there on Friday, right? I drive all the way to St. Pete, pal, on Friday. Having a loaded day, pal, you know? Go check in the Airbnb. Go and check out downtown Tampa. Go get some beers, pal, you know? Come back. Mm -hmm. Took a nice dinner. I go out on the town, right? Mm -hmm. Ybor City. It's a nice, lovely place where, you know, there's tons of bars and clubs and whatnot. So I go to this club, 
I, I, you're not much of a club guy, right? Uh, I've I've been to I've been to clubs. I'm I'm not like a weekly or active club goer. Did did, did you have an era where you went on a regular basis? Yes, yes, I did. So you're familiar with the cover charges and how all that stuff works. Yes. Yep. So I go there to this club, and uh, I'm going in, I'm going in. I'm like ah oh, whatever you know typical typical Friday night no big deal nothing crazy going on. I'm gonna walk in this club. The bouncer stops me. He's like hold on bro, hold on. And I'm like, okay, typically, you know, you got a lady with you, I pay for myself, the girl gets in free or like half off. I'm like, whatever. Like, well, what's the problem here, Mr. Bouncer? He's like, hey, we're having an event tonight. You need a wristband. Puts this wristband on me and my lady. And I'm like, fuck, like, okay, this is a club, bro. Like, what is this? Like, what am I walking into? Like a concert? Um, and the lady's like, oh, it's gonna be $60 cover. Thirty dollars each, and I'm like, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, so you want me to pay you sixty dollars to go into your club and listen to music, and and be and have the privilege to buy a drink from your bar, and I said it just like that. There, I'm not even like that's literally verbatim what I said, and and she's like, yeah, kinda, and I'm like, all right, have a good night. You know, you know, I mean, I did the right thing. You know, I don't want to look like a jerk. So I asked my girl, I'm like, hey, do you want to do this? If you want to, well, we can go in, you know, whatever. I did, you know, she's like, no, let, fuck that. Let's go somewhere else. So then we go somewhere else. And uh, I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting at this bar. And, they're, and the bartender is like being bombarded. You know, you know, some nights when it's busy and there's mm. only one bartender and the guy's just like about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yeah, because it's just constant. It is just non-stop, and, and especially club goers, no one is sparing a thought for the the, the sanity or the well-being of the bartender. He's yes. like, "Oh my drink now, give me the drink," and it's like, okay, yes. like that, that that's someone who has a home, a family, you know, maybe they have a, a dog, you know, they're trying to sustain themselves, or uh, maybe they've got poor mental health, but they're trying to get by. This is their only job, and they're getting abused anyway. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Literally. People are like, where's my, where's my drink? Where's my drink? Whatever. I'm standing there, probably like 15 minutes going by. And I'm just like, whatever. Like, I'm just talking, having a good time. Then I'm like, oh, there's another bar. Like, on, on the other side. Let's go to the other bar. Go sit down at this bar. Now, you know, as, a, as, a, you, as you were one time a frequent club goer, mm -hmm. you kind of know, like, there's, there's a guy code, right? And... You know what I'm saying? Like, guys can speak without communicating. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with this. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, right? Yep, I'm men, saying. men can speak to each other without communicating. Mm -hmm. So, I have a girl with me. And, bro, this was another moment where there was almost no elite heat. I, so, I, I'm sitting there. I'm, like, I'm standing at the bar waiting for this girl to bring my drinks. My, girl's, my girlfriend's on the, I'm like, she's sitting, like, far enough from me where people could think that we're not together, you know? And she's, mm -hmm. like, on my phone taking selfies, whatever. And I'm just like, can I just get my, my Jack and Coke, please? Like, trying to move on with my night, you know? All right. Um, and this guy walks up to me. And we're, is, like, standing right next to her. Like, really close to her. And is looking at me. And, you know, like, he's giving me the look, like, hey, are you, you talking to her? Are you hollering at her? Like, what's, what's the deal, you know? And I give him the look, like, she's with me, bro. Like, you know? Right. Like, what, just, like, just like, yeah. Like, come on. Like, what is there to yeah. see here, you know? And this guy is like standing right there the whole time and like looking at me. And I'm like, uh, I'm looking at this dude and I'm like, bro, I don't know how many drinks you had. I don't know. Like, this is Florida. People are fucking crazy in Florida. If yeah. there's anything about Florida. So I'm like, I'm like, there's two, I got two things I could do here right now. Like, I, you know, my, my, my girlfriend is not like that girl from that went on, went on the Usher's at Usher's concert. You saw this. Dancing with the with the singer, like she's not gonna embarrass me like that. Like she's not even looking at this guy that's like standing next to her. That's that, 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 that's all Usher's fault, pal. Yeah, yes, it's bro. all Usher's fault, pal. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it just happens at Usher's concerts. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. Usher brings Usher ruins relationships. So I'm like, I'm like looking at this guy. Like there's two things I could do right now. I could say something, and who knows what the hell is gonna happen here? There'd be no more elite heat, pal. If I say something and this guy has like a knife on him or something. Oh my god. Or the other thing is just to walk away. You know, but it's yeah. like, it's like, bro, like you, you're looking, you're standing there looking at me. You're standing right next to her. Like, and, and you're like trying to like assert dominance. Like, oh, unbelievable. I'm making a move on her. And I'm just like, bro, get the fuck out. Like, back up. Like, I know. read the room. It, 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 
it, it, it, it's, it's, it's reading the room, which is like something which, I mean, I found this, as we've all heard from my last like hour of experience of the elimination chamber, I'm like, you're sitting one foot behind a five-year-old girl and you're, you're shouting, F you. I'm like, hello? It's the same thing with this. It's like, hello? Like I'm, I'm like there. We, we've like, uh, we've not, I'm literally with what's up. Like you good. Like, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to start anything. Like, just like, can, can we not? I'm just trying to have a good night. Right. Yes. And then, th- then this dude's just like, yeah, it's like standing there. Like, Hey, like, yeah. You know, and you feel like, but you, like what you want to say is you just F off and go over there and just leave me alone. Literally. Like I'm trying to have a good night. Just yeah. like get the F out of my face. But obviously if you say that, that's just going to, who knows if we have a late heat anymore, if you say that. So like, yeah. you got you to play the high road. And even though, you know, everyone's, especially in, in the clubs particularly, a lot of people just like, you know, hardly take the high road with things. They, they use the low road wherever possible at clubs. So yes, there you go. exactly. So yeah. I'm like, so I'm just like, bro, there's like the whole, the half this bar is empty and you're like standing right there. Like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I was like, I just walked away, yeah, whatever. Now, on to the parking. So, I paid for parking ahead of time for the Royal Rumble. And there was like a, a black parking lot, blue and yellow or something, blue and gold. They had directions all across St. Petersburg, littered all across St. Petersburg in the downtown area by a Tropicana field. They had all these directions like, oh, this is how you get to the blue, this is how you get to the gold. No directions to get to the black parking lot. So I'm like, okay, how do where do I where do I park, bro? I'm like asking, I asked like three cops that are just casually keeping control of the city. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. where's the uh, where's the black parking lot? Oh, I don't know. Follow the signs. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just work here. Like, bro, it's the same thing for the Rays games. Like, if you worked Rays games, you know where this parking lot is. So I'm like, I'm like, my Airbnb was like four minutes from the parking garage I was supposed to park at. The parking garage I was supposed to park at is like a thirty minute walk. To the field and like in some like not a great part of st petersburg in a random like piece of property not even a parking lot just grass it's just grass and dirt everywhere so i'm all the way by the field trying to get through this traffic like oh we're gonna park right here whatever literally I have to get onto my phone i like use a map and like look at the sit look at the the street names like wow. like like uh, like his map quest like it's 2003 or something I got to look at the street names and get my way on my own. Find my way to the economy parking parking space. I see a tiny sign as I get there. And I'm like, bro, I'm realizing like in real time, like this is three minutes from the Airbnb. We could have fucking walked from the Airbnb to the to the ballpark. Like, why did I pay for parking if, if this is what I was going to get? So I pull up. Nice lady. Um, you know, these are like typical Florida. Look at people. If you know, you know, um, and she's like, oh, sorry, got no parking here. And I'm like, I, I, like, I paid for parking like, ahead of time. Like, what do you mean there's yeah. no parking? She's like, we, we, we oversold the lot. We're oh opening up the next one. Oh, my God, what? I know, I know. So I'm like, you open up the next one. Okay, whatever. Go to the next lot. It's literally like, bro, there's like three cars in there. It's like me and two other people. <laughs> And this one guy is asking me, like, hey, is this parking free? I'm like, no, apparently you had to pay for this. I, I had to pay $25, $30 to walk 30 minutes to the field. <laughs> that's bad. Like, oh that's, like that's, that's bad. Like, you know, because if you're going to pay that much, you'd rather have it just be like, you, you pretty much dropped off and have a very short walk. Because obviously, as anyone who's been outside knows, Especially these big stadium events, you're not just going to be dropped right outside the door or park right outside. There's, there's going to be a bit of a walk to get across a bridge or somewhere or somewhere to get to the stadium. But that's bad. That, that's just like that's a headache. Oh, you know? so egregious. Now, all of that, all of that for you to go along, watch the Royal Rumble, and be sat there with a bunch of ungrateful fans in St. Petersburg, the CM Punk and Cody Rhodes, two of the biggest stars of the past ten years, not named Roman Reigns, uh, busily fighting away in a 10 minute epic at the end of the rumble and you're all just like eh. yeah they're all just sitting on their hands like come on somebody chant with me like i'm trying to start like a cm punk chant like let's go cody wow. nobody's chanting in my section yeah it was bad. bad all right pal i'm ready to get out of here we, this is a two hour long episode this has been yeah. uh 
the, your chronicles from Perth, pal. And yeah, yeah we're out of here. Peace. <laughs>